Why not? All right. We'll call this a uh, regular scheduled session of court, uh, physical court into uh, into order, and we'll start out with uh, invocation by Magistrate uh, Ronnie Short. Have everyone bow their heads. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you today for your grace. We thank you for watching over all of us. We thank you for keeping keeping us safe during these times. Thank you, Lord, for the court. We pray that you'll help our schools, our children, and our county during this tragic time that we're facing. Uh, as I was thinking about what to pray today, you know, I pray to, I pray to God every day. And I think he's the answer to all of our problems. But I was thinking, Lord, won't you send this coronavirus back to hell from where it come from? Because that's where it came from. So I pray that you'll help us all. In Second Chronicles 7 and 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. So today I hope that we'll pray for one another. We'll pray for our country, which is in need of prayer. And uh, amen. 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 All right, next, uh, follow me in our pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. Next, we need to approve some minutes from our prior meeting. And so is uh, Lawrence uh, in the neighborhood. Lawrence? Minutes or bills? I mean, no, no. Uh, yeah, uh, approve the minutes. Go ahead. I moved to Review. the minutes of July 14th and July 15th, 2020. Second it. Okay. All right. Uh, the motion has been made by <clears throat> Harris Gay to approve the minutes for both July uh, meetings, 14th and the... Uh, Call Special call meeting on the 15th, as seconded by Master Short. Uh, comments, direction, uh, deletions, corrections? Judge, only a couple of tiny ones this time. I, I was thinking in the meeting, uh, either... Which uh, one we're talking about? Uh, the, regular. the regular meeting. Okay. Um, I was thinking when we talked about the Mercer County uh, jail contract, that that happened either in the section where the, uh, Jailer Wolford was speaking or at the end that you were going to get with us uh, in the near future on a meeting date. Uh, I know we mentioned it some sometime, one or the other. So somewhere in there, uh, there should be something about the fact that we're going to get together with the county folks over in Mercer about the jail contract. Okay. And then at the top of page three, Consider amendment if McKinney should be consider amendment to McKinney cleaning contract. And that is all. Uh, okay, yeah, and take, change the word if to two. Okay. And that is all. Anybody else? Anybody else? All those uh, in favor of the motion as presented signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, light sign. Motion carries. All right. Now, let me see where we are next. And it looks like now we're there yeah, to approve no, bills. I wasn't here. Is Lauren out there, <laughs> Roger? Bills for July 28th, 2020. The payroll was $291,107.47. Purchase orders and vouchers, total 
$529.21, a grand total of $1,158,636.68. Does anybody have any questions about the bill? Motion made by Master Gay to pay the bills as Second. presented. Seconded by Master Cullen. Discussion? Comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those light sign. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, budget transfers, then cash transfers. So we circulated some budget transfers. Primarily, they were to reallocate throughout the accounts, uh, the liability insurance payments and overages and under underages, or if that's a word. And um, in addition to that, there's some COVID expenditures that are being covered by reserve money. So those are primarily your budget transfers, if you would like to accept those. Make a motion, we accept. Second. Motion made by Major Short, seconded. But Major Simons to uh, uh, approve the budget transfers. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those like sign, motion carries. Uh, cash transfer. Cash transfers. We have two of those. General funds will be allocating $200,000 to EMS if approved and another $50,000 to the jail operations. Cash transfers. I'll make that motion. Second. <clears throat> motion made by Magic Gay, second by Magic Cullen to make the cash transfer. Are there any questions, comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Roger Fox and James Hun, the junior. <laughs> going to update us on Shepherd's House. Hey guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You want to go first? You go first. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, uh, first of all, I want to say I appreciate each of you guys. I'm so happy to see all of you all. It feels like it's been a long time since uh, since I've got to talk to you guys and, and kind of tell you about the program and kind of tell you about the Shepherd's House. We're in our uh, third year. Um, and uh man we've seen some incredible stuff and and we've learned a lot of stuff recently with uh covid and and the way that we deliver our services and and things like that but i just wanted to tell you guys that since 2017 when our program opened in february we've served over 300 men and women uh, that have involvement with the criminal justice system whether they're in jail they have current cases in district or circuit court and uh, we've been able to help them now you know, I'm always transparent about this, is that out of that 300, not all of them are ready. You know, and we understand that. And, and what me and James like to think is that we're just there to plant that seed, you know, uh, to, uh, to, to show them that there is a different way, that there is some hope, you know, and that when they are ready, they know where to come, you know. And that's one of the proudest things uh, uh, that, I, that I'm very proud about the Shepherd's House in Boyle County is that we have become the hub for recovery in the community. You know, we have served 300 individuals that have involvement with the criminal justice system, but we've served many, many more than that that just show up at our front door. You know, and they say, can I go to treatment? They don't, how do I get into Isaiah House? How do I, you know, go to recovery housing? How do I do this? And, and we're there to plug those people in, you know? And most of the time, um, we, can, we can take that individual and we can give them uh, hygiene and some clean clothes. The treatment center will come and pick them up. And, and they're gone, you know, and, and we're always trying to stay in contact with that individual and offering services when they come back. So uh, our goal, and I think James will agree, is that our goal is to be impactful, you know, and I really, really believe that we've done that. In 2017, our first year, we served 75 clients. In 2018, 75 clients also. Uh, 2019 going into 2020 with Chris and Patrick working with them we were able to help a hundred men and women from the criminal justice system and this year uh, it's it's it was on track to to do more COVID and the court shutdown kind of uh, hurt that but um, we have been getting some referrals from circuit court which is good people with bond conditions reporting to the Shepherd's House and we're helping them 
get into treatment. Um, you know, 65 of our individuals have graduated with full-time employment. And what we're finding out is that when people come in, they buy into James's program, they buy into our program, they get employed, they stay the entire time, successfully complete their court cases. Uh, those individuals are staying out of jail, you know? And that was the original uh, intent of the program anyways, yeah. to help individuals get out of jail and stay out of jail. And we've been able to do that, and I'm, I'm very proud of that. Our staff um, has really helped people reach their starting point, you know, in recovery in this journey and been, a, been there along the way to help them do that. Uh, you know, yesterday, uh, just reaffirmed why I do my job. We had a client that got referred to us a week ago. Um, honestly, I, he was in jail. He wanted to come to the program. That's what we were set up to do, right? Help you get out of jail uh, if, you, if you're ready to do this treatment deal. He came to our program. Um, he, he didn't show up yesterday, and I was worried about him. I just happened to be on the phone with pretrial, and they said, hey, such and such is down here at Constitution Square drinking a beer right now. You need to come and find them. Oh. Okay? So I go to Constitution Square, and he's nowhere to be found. You know, and I start looking around and I find this individual uh, behind a house down on First Street up against a fence where he's covered by trees. There's beer cans everywhere um, and he's passed out drunk with a beer in his hand, you know, and I took him and I put him in my car and I drove him down to the shepherd's house. He stunk. He didn't have any clean clothes uh, and, and I helped him get into treatment. You know, uh, through our partnerships, right? Uh, Brent Blevins wrote me the check to make sure that he got transported there. You know, the treatment center was there to take him. Like, and it, one was like, he's got to wait till Wednesday. And I said, that's not going to happen. I have to, he has to go today, you know? And he was willing to go today. And I spent all day yesterday helping this individual. But when I left and I went home last night, I thought, you know what? This is why you do what you do at the Shepherd's House in Boyle County is to help people like that, you know? Uh, and when he comes back, we have a plan for him, and, and uh, I just, you know, that's why we do what we do. That is, that is why we do what we do. We are working hard. Um, this week, we're really trying to develop a post-COVID plan for, you know, the Supreme Court when they lift these restrictions and people will start going back to jail. I think that, you know, this jail is going to end up being four or 500 people, you know? And how do we serve those individuals? How do we help the jail? How do we help the county? How do we be a good partner, but also help these people uh, get the treatment that they need? And so we're putting that plan together now. You know, it may look like different shifts of individuals. We might have people reporting from 9 to 12 and from 1 to 4 and then from 5 to 8, you know, trying to serve as many people as possible to help with that overflow, uh, to be a good partner to you guys. That's always our goal, to be a good partner and, and to be a good uh just to be a servant of this community because they've always been so good to us. You know, you always all have <laughs> been so good to us. So we appreciate that. Uh, we're making impacts in people's lives through COVID. You know, we, we had three individuals graduate, graduate the program during all of this mess, you know, during the shutdown, they stayed sober. They, they've been able to do that. And we have uh, a handful of individuals that are going to graduate at the end of August that have just blown me away. You know, so it's like people are buying into the program and doing the right thing and changing their lives and being moms and dads and, and doing all of that stuff. It's amazing. Uh, I really, you know, I love being here. That's, that's it. I love being here. I love serving this community and I love being a part of the Shepherd's House. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. I know that. So, that's what makes the difference. Yeah, I think so. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, we try, it gets frustrating some days. You know, it gets hard some days, uh, but but we know that this is what we're supposed to be doing. And thank God for James. Uh, you know, when it gets too frustrating, I'll come on, man. I need you in this office. I need to talk to you about. And he did that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did that. But you know, our part of the, the Circle of Hope and the Hope Network. You know, we have been involved since day one, and uh, and I counted a blessing. One of the one of the inmates at the jail. Uh, last Thursday night, he asked me, James, would you like to trade any place right now that you would rather be? And I told him, no, I know I'm supposed to be here. And what we're trying to do is to help not only them, but the Shepherd's House clients understand that they need to find their purpose. Because I believe if they don't understand their purpose, they will keep wandering around trying to fill that void in their life. And so part of our, of course, what we've been doing since day one is the employment process. So the Hope Network became a official vendor of bulk rehab. So this year, this is what we did this year. 
you know, as they, if they complete, if, if from day one, if they work through us with the Shepherd's House program, which our curriculum is the same curriculum, I, and I tell people, I plagiarize the same curriculum that the military uses for transition assistance to help build resume, job skills. I used, I, I downloaded that information from the Defense Department, which is, and I give that credit to them, but that's the same pro, that's the same curriculum that I use as I transition out the military. So our clients are getting that same information that every active duty member that's coming out of the military gets for their resume building, their job skills, their interview process, and their dressing for success. It is the same information. So when we became a partner with Folk Rehab as an official vendor, of course at day one, Folk Rehab gives the Hope Network $500. That goes straight to the Hope Network so we can continue to do the print the curriculum and any other needs that we do at day at day 45 if they stay on the job there's fifteen hundred dollars that goes to the Hope Network we give the clients two hundred and fifty dollars of that money so because we want to invest back in them they become in productive citizens they're paying their taxes because they have to have a 1099 or a tax paying job so this year what we decided to do last year or the two previous year, we gave the client $750. At the beginning of this year, the Hope Network voted to give them $1,000. So if they stay on that job for 90 days, they have the potential of getting $90. So they can do like last year, especially around the Christmas time, they needed it to buy yeah. clothes for the families, you know, and everything. And as Roger said, these are the individuals that are going to the program, uh, stand sober, stand productive citizen, and so by that way, we can reinvest back into them. And one thing I just want to say, from day one, the fiscal court has supported when Barry uh, Harmon originally announced this. And, and, and I just say thank you because we understand that this disease does not stop, just like cancer, diabetes, and other stuff. But what we're doing, I begin to look at it. This is the disease, but we are part of their treatment. We're the doctors. Ooh, I feel like preaching, but I won't. You know, <laughs> but, 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 but we play a part in their well-being as they recover, just like any treatment team would be. Uh, it's amazing to see that our team work together, and I'm honored. I, and I like, I don't do this. I could be in Washington, D.C. making big money as, a, uh, as an intelligent analyst, but I decide not to do that because I understand my purpose is to be here at this particular time in this particular season. So I'm honored to work with Roger. And just to see the, just to see the, 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 the changes in individuals. You know, one of the young men, as I was doing class yesterday, you know, he said, you know, I kind of messed up this weekend. But I said, one thing that we've always said at the Shepherd's House, this is a no judgment zone. We have all sinned and fell short, but we don't want to put any of that on you, but we're here to support you. I said, well, you still got my number, so I gave you, you have my business card on you. So when you feel tempted to go out and drink or whatever, you have my number, you have Roger's number. We really mean that. It's no just, we are here. We are here for you. You know, I was the first sergeant in the military, so I understand getting to a phone call at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, but if that's what it takes for you to remain sober, that's what we really are here for, and that's coming from our hearts. So we just appreciate what you guys are doing and young ladies are doing here to support the Shepherd's House and the Hope Network as we continue to minister to these people to give them hope, to give them hope. Uh, uh, we are, uh, just an update on the county side, I know, but we, we are planning I'm almost two PowerPoint slides away from the county program, so hopefully by this fall, both men and women on the county side will be having some of this curriculum that our state guys are going because we truly believe these are the ones that are coming back into our communities. Right. And just to give them the tools to say, hey, there's hope and hopefully we can play a part, as Roger said early, sowing that seed into their sobriety that we could here be support you. But we really support what you're doing. We're going to continue to need the support. <clears throat> Everywhere I go, we can, because this is not stopping. At the ASAP meeting last week, we, Kathy was telling us, even during Corona, there's still been an increase in overdose deaths and suicide. So we know there's a need in our community. These are our, our, our mothers, our fathers, our sons, and our daughters. And we're just honored to be a part of this. So we thank you, uh, mattresses, and judge what you guys do to support. And I, as I said at our ASAP meeting last week, we are blessed to be in a community like this because every community, those, those folks from Boyd County that's over in the jail, they tell me, Pastor Hunt, we don't have this kind of support in our community. But they're looking for somebody to believe in them to give them that opportunity. So I think that's what the Shepherd's House do. And we understand there's going to be ups and downs, valleys and hills, but we're, we're here for the long haul. Long haul. We're in the battle in the trenches to help give some hope to some people. So we appreciate what you, uh, what the court continues to do for us. Thank you all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think we are truly blessed to have people like this in yeah. our community oh, yeah. that are doing what they're doing. And I can't thank you both enough. I will say that uh, 
Shepherd's Health is experiencing some very good growth because uh, uh, our uh, counterparts in Scott County have adopted them as a contractor for to do the same thing in Scott County that they've done here in Boyle County. And uh, the judge over there, Joe Pat Covington, is in, and I think are, are very well pleased with the start of what they uh, have seen be very successful here in Boyle County. Uh, Roger has a uh, uh, a project right now that he's working on, and, and I'm, I'm honored to be a little bit a part of it. Uh, he's trying to come up with uh, an extension uh, piece of the puzzle that we have yet to fulfill in this county, and that is a uh, emergency shelter uh, sheltering uh, place for um, short-term transit, and not transit, that's the wrong term, but homeless people. Because, you know, James, as well as everybody, anybody, when you get out, some of, there is a certain element of those people who have nowhere to go. And uh, they need some place to go. And I understand that uh, Andrew Wilkinson's facility is, is uh, doing well, but we're talking about a little different twist on who the clientele might be. And if we can ever come up with uh, some place that could potentially house 15 to 20 very short term, so to speak, people to give them a place to uh, kind of refocus their, their efforts and everything with the assistance of these guys, I think it'd be a tremendous help. So we're, we're kind of looking and discussing and talking and and we met with, some, not to take up all your time, we met with some great partners and some great communities that are doing good things. And I think we're kind of coming around to this idea that, you know, a lot, our homeless population looks a lot different than, than in larger cities. But, uh, no, our homeless population usually has involvement in uh, Chris's court or <laughs> in the jail, you know. And we're talking about maybe trying to target those individuals. It don't have to necessarily be substance use. Uh, it could be mental health. It could just be homelessness, right? And we're talking about a, uh, a landing a landing spot and a launching pad, you know, a short term. And, and we think that the Shepherd's House could play a part in that as being a hub. And, and we've got this, we're kind of developing this plan to where individuals stay in, in, our, in a house, you know, or, or a location, and then they could come to Shepherd's House, maybe that side office, and receive some services. And when they come and receive that service, they kind of get their pass to stay the next night, right? So we're not saying come here and flop. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't want that, you know. But we want you to kind of, if we have to push you a little bit, you have to push. You know, people had to push me. Mm -hmm. but, but to provide some motivation for them to get the services they need to get to their next mm -hmm. location. You know, and we think just starting small is fine. You know, we're, uh, so that's something that we're working on, Kathy Miles and, and Judge Hunt and a lot of great, uh, we, have, we have a lot of people in the community that are, that are thinking about this problem, you know, city included, and uh, so I think that we're going to be able to come up with a solution for that right. and help. Well, we appreciate both of y'all very much. Absolutely. Glad to have you back, Roger. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I'm so glad to be back. <laughs> it, it was a void, I'm sure, at Shepherd's House, but it's also a void in all of our hearts, too, when you, when you weren't here. So. How many people does Andrew have? Yeah, he texted me yesterday looking for some of the state guys that are getting ready to uh, get out. But there, we have one potential, but most of them want to go back to their own communities, okay. you know, because most of those guys are not Boyle County residents, you know, so the, on the state side. So that most of them want to go back to their community, so, which is understandable, because that's where they can have most of their support, you know, so. Yeah. Well, there's one thing after listening to y'all talk, and I, I really value this. I see two people who love each other and who work together as a team and how fortunate we are to have you two as a team doing what you're doing together. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, he's my, my brother. brother. <laughs> <laughs> he's my brother from another mother. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. Thank you all. Y'all have a blessed day. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Go with God. All right, uh, Steve. next on our list is the Dale Bull County Plain Zoning Commission's recommendation. Steve, uh, to amend Article 5 of the Bull County Joint Zoning Ordinance. So I guess we're going to go from drug addiction and homelessness to drinking bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Lord. All over the county. Now, um, you guys should remember this. You had two meetings where you debated in this issue in a... Uh, more generic fashion 
and what you all made action was was to direct the Planning Commission to pursue such a text amendment to allow distilled spirits in the agricultural zone. We talked about Nelson County a bunch, if you remember. They had the ordinance that EDP and the distillers locally brought to the governments and said way back in January, Judge, there was a meeting where they pitched us this idea from Nelson County. And the Planning Commission's position was, well, if the governments tell us to do it, we'll put such a text amendment on the floor of the P&Z and run it through its proper public hearing and then bring it back to you guys. City never gave us such a directive. And you guys had two meetings and talked it from both sides and all sides and, we, and then gave us a directive to pursue such an amendment. So we took the Nelson County model and we tweaked it. I think to make it better to protect our uh, ag areas and neighbors that we have out in the county. But the general premise is you could do rick houses out in the county on agriculturally zoned land, just the storage. This wouldn't be distilleries or visitation or retail. It would just be the storage of the bourbon, or in this case, any distilled spirit. And then we had to figure out where it fits in our ordinance. So we drafted this, and I'll just quickly just point out a couple things. We did something a lot different than Nelson County, but it's a general premise. Um, so if you've got that handout, just real quick, I'll just walk you through a couple things. Look here, buddy. Got it. Um, Five dash four. I'll look at the page numbers at the bottom. The chart I think is interesting to start with. I want to point something out in the chart. So it's the very second page. You see in red, it says craft brewery or distilled spirit storage or production because we already had a category like that. But I want to point out right above it, this is still in an industrial use as far as the zoning ordinance goes. So the chart's important because the left-hand category at the very top says use category. And we're in the industrial section. And we're not saying that this is an agricultural use. We're saying this is something we're going to allow in an agricultural zone. So we put a C under the ag. As you can see, a C means it's a conditional use permit in an ag zone, but it's still an industrial use as far as its general use category. It's, it's industrial storage is what it is. We're just allowing this kind of industrial storage in the ag zone. So the chart's important, and then, then it's already allowed in the industrial zones. Um, turn to the page to 5-36, and we're further into this chapter 5. Again, at the bottom there, we already had a standard for distilled spirit production. We just added storage. And then at the bottom of 536 and then 537, the top, A through G was already the rules if you were doing this in an industrial zone. So all we added was what starts with number H in the subsections. These are now the rules from H down of if you're doing it in unincorporated Boyle County only. This would not be in the city of Danville. Junction City or Perryville, just an unincorporated, your ordinance, basically. And these are the rules that we put into effect to do this. And I'll point out H. Um, Nelson County uses a 100-acre threshold and up, or 50 and up, different rules. We went with 20 acres and greater. Um, 20 is a big farm. Most of these are going to be on bigger farms, but we use 20 acres as a threshold for a couple reasons. Under our subdivision regs, 20 acre tracks and bigger are exempt from planning and zoning, platting anyhow. Um, and you know, 20 acres is the way we've made this work. 50% still has to stay in ag production. It's very unlikely you're gonna see it on 20s or 30s. It's probably gonna be on hundreds or several tracks. But this way someone could assemble multiple tracks and they don't actually have to plat them into 100. They could have five 20s and do them on that if they wanted. So we use 20 acres. Um, it also says then you have to, this is where it says that you have to have a conditional use permit. And as you all know, that means you got to go to the Board of Adjustments and get their approval first. And then they got to follow these rules. Um, bottom of 537, we have some language about not being a floodplain or naturally sensitive area. That was in Nelson County. Some pushback on that from the distillers group, but we worked through it with them and said that's a critical element there. We don't want structures in the floodplain, obviously. Um, number three, how about, what's that? So we, we know the property that, that we're talking about essentially. Well, it, well, the property we're talking about is kind of part of this, but because this is about anywhere. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm well aware of that. But that so one has floodplain on it. Sure. Floodplain also has gas pipelines running through it. 
So is that part of the naturally sensitive section, or how does that? Uh, no, it would not be naturally sensitive. Pipelines wouldn't be naturally sensitive, but you're going to be prohibited from putting structures in the gas okay. easement anyhow. Yeah. 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 Those are easements. That's a Those are general so easement rules. Um, some of the gas lines are actually in the floodplain, interesting enough, um, if you're looking at that property. But there's floodplain, there's five gas lines, and all that would have to be navigated. Uh, if it was developed under this fashion, that's on them to figure that out. But you can never put a structure in a gas easement. You could put parking or driveways, but not a structure. Okay. So they still got plenty of land on there because it's a big piece of property. Um, three at the top was interesting because we added this. Nelson County doesn't have this. So, you know, I think give ourselves a little credit here. We think a little more outside the box. Um, they don't have anything about roads. And we thought it was important. We got narrow county roads. We use the word collector, which means it has to be a collector street. As far as its definition, it means that's a bigger road. It gets between other roads. No dead end roads. No roads less than 18 foot wide. We also put a requirement, but we use the word should. Roads have to be at least 18 foot wide, and they should at least have shoulders, three foot. We have a little flexibility there. Let the language a little vague. Where are you at? Uh, top three, of top on three. 38. Talk with Dwayne about this. We think this is the right thing to do. If we're gonna put big structures out in the county, we're gonna have truck traffic navigating around. We don't need them on dead end roads or 12 foot wide roads or 14 foot wide roads. You're gonna to have to be on a bigger caliber street before you do something of this nature. That's gonna to have to be on a main road then because- Pretty much a 18 foot county, wide means- a County road. Pretty wide, yeah. Oh, you guys got some 18 foot county roads, but that's a, that's a collector street means it's Two nine-foot lanes normally has a stripe in it, not I mean, 16. That's not a real good intersection right there anyway. Well, they're going to improve that. That was well, something I mean, you guys have already to talked about. Because when you come over that hill, you got a big tractor trailer turning the left there. Those two roads would actually meet this requirement as oh, far as okay. the width. But but that they was that don't graphic you gave us a month or two ago, right? Yeah, yeah but they still would have two shoulders. Yeah, okay. That was them. Yeah, that came through them. Number four, we'll go through this quicker. This is the fire protection standard we went with. Nelson County said it simply had to be sprinkled. The distillers pushed back on that locally and said, look, that's not really what we do or we want to do. So we hit this like with four different ways here, actually five. If you're in Danville's utility service area, Danville says they want water to the site. It's not as critical whether the structures are sprinkled as do we physically have water to the site. So this says you're going to have to have hydrants and 600 gallons a minute with 20 PSI if you're in Danville's utility. So the business is gonna to have to decide how they get water to the site. If you're outside the Danville area, we dropped it down by half. It's, you know, 300 gallons, 20 PSI. You're talking about a six inch water line in one scenario, four inch water line in the other. That's on them to get water to the site. Whether it can put out a fire or not, we're not gonna debate that or try to be, figure that out. We want, pot, we want water and hydrants on the property if you're gonna do this. But at the bottom, we gave them the lieu of option. And we referenced these NFPAs, which are natural fire protection uh, standards, 13, 750, and 1142. One's a mister system, one's a sprinkler system. Again, what's the point of putting a sprinkler in if you don't have good water pressure? Yeah. <laughs> the Nelson right. County says they all have to be sprinkled. But if you've got a four inch water line, what's yeah. the point of that? Yeah. So on the 600 gallons a minute, you could probably do some sprinkling, maybe it would work. Four inch line, it wouldn't work. So we did 13s, Mr. Um, sprinklers, 750s, Mr. 1142 is really what is probably the carrot for the distillers here. That's a dry hydrant system, which means if you have a pond and a standpipe and you can produce the pressure and the fire flow through a standing water source, swimming pool, whatever, that can be your fire protection source. That's a national standard that's used all over the country in rural areas. If anything, that gets you a way to fill the tanker trucks up, keep shoveling water back and forth. But instead of having to maybe run a four inch water line, four or five miles and put hydrants in, if you've got a stand of water on your property, the fire department can use that under the 1142. And any of those alternate systems have to be approved by the appropriate fire jurisdiction. So you've talked to Donnie about this? Didn't talk to Donnie, I talked to Danville. Um, didn't get a chance, I tried to contact them. Um, but I talked to Danville because the one we're talking about is going to be in the Danville. It's in the county as far as fire protection, but it's in the Danville utility area for water. So it's going to fall under the 600 gallons a minute requirement. But if it's 
if it's a big fire, they are going to be there. So yeah, they're all going to be they're there. All That's what they there. said. Yeah. So they're fine with this. Um, well, they've got a great big pond out there, so. and they have a great big pond yeah. on that property. Yeah. Interesting yeah. enough, so yeah. they'll probably take advantage of this 1142. Yeah, and they'll have to work with the fire department to exactly how to put the standpipe in what kind of surface the truck would want to get to the water source. I'm not going to require it, okay, for, for, for my purpose, but I think Dottie ought to have some input. Yeah, well, we contacted, we tried to set up a meeting with both fire chiefs, and we're... He, he, he then becomes informed, Yeah, and he's a part of it, which sure. I think is a good thing. Yeah. I had a conversation with him after our second meeting about it, with some concern, or after our first meeting with some concerns about the sprinklers, about the sprinklers especially, uh -huh. and he essentially said sprinklers would do no good. All you want that thing to do is to burn. You want to have basically something around the side where everything can it's flow into, and you, and you just want it to, to burn down. Yeah. You want uh, containment, right? Yeah, you want containment. You don't want sprinklers. That, that's not going to do anything. It's like yeah, throwing not on alcohol. Yeah. Not going to do anything. Yeah. So he said the best thing to do is have almost like one of those kind of suppression systems, but. Well, the problem is we don't have pressure that they don't. And again, we're getting into the weeds here. But what's interesting, I think, when we really think about fire protection, what we're trying to do in Bull County is unique. Is we got houses everywhere. We cut off one acre lots everywhere. So let's say that we'll use the judge. Let's say the judge. Mention, mention, come on in. So let's say the judge had a big farm, and he might be separated. But if there's a one acre house close, we're trying to protect the fire from spreading to a, a residential structure. So we're talking about we're these distilled about spirits. Yeah, I heard y'all contact me. Well, I did try to contact. No, you didn't. My phone works. Okay, well. Um, Nobody from Plains Jones called me about anything. The, uh, the interim chief is Doug, right? Yeah. I emailed both parties and tried to set up a meeting. Then I caught Doug at City Hall and said, I was trying to get both of y'all together. And well, I, I just asked him. Say I haven't heard from him. Yeah. Well, if we didn't get you, we apologize, but we send the email out. I told anybody saying, "Oh, I've talked to Donnie." When? Well, I just. Well, he said he hadn't talked to you. He said I hadn't talked to you. I tried to get a hold of. He said he hadn't talked to you. I said you and I. You and I had a conversation about he, yeah, it. Yeah, he one said one. you yeah, all talked. Yeah, you and I, but I've never talked to anybody else. <clears throat> I just wanted to interject that, yeah. and I hadn't. Heard well, what we're proposing is is, is, is uh, if they put these rick houses out, we're talking about a dry hydrant option for them that you all would have to approve. I would say so since it's in our fire. Right, district. right. Yeah. Well, right now the and one we're never interrupt. Okay. Never, never interrupt. I didn't know anything about it. So we'll move on then. Um, number five is exactly out of Nelson County. Number six was Nelson County, kind of. They had just 200 foot setback, just a flat 200 foot. We added the second sentence that said if there's a residential use or zone, it's a 500 foot setback. So if there is a house next door, we're going to push the setback. And then number seven, if there's a church or school or park, 1,000-foot setback. So we've gone to three kinds of setbacks, which is different than Nelson County. Nelson didn't have that. Didn't just they? the 200-foot. But they didn't that's have all the they church had. and the school. And that and makes sense that. if it's farm to farm. But again, yeah. if there's a house that's cut out in that one acre, we want a more separation from the house. Eight deals with the agricultural use staying on the property in some percentage. It still has to be in some agricultural uh, production. And then eight deals with storage. You had, uh, you had two, two public hearings on this? We had two public hearings. We introduced it in June and tabled it so everyone could study on it, read it. Then we, had, we came back in July. We had six or seven people there. I think three, four, three against, and someone that was just in the room about another item, but spoke. Um, it passed unanimous. It passed eight to zero. Was this advertised in the paper about this? Yes. Yeah. I'll, make, uh, I don't I'll make a motion. We approve the this, zone th ordinance amendment. This would actually have to be by ordinance, and I sent a sample out to you guys, and, and but Chris can change it. Again, this can just be a discussion consensus or this could be the first reading of the ordinance if you all saw fit to amend the text it's whatever yeah, Chris sir, you got advice I think it's very thorough yeah. they really put a lot of thought and effort into it and they didn't just take the Nelson County and like go with that I mean I think they added some extra uh, things in there protections and so forth that uh, are good for our, our county so uh, I mean I've reviewed it and Okay, and I approve it. So I'd love to let you all to approve it. I think that this can count as a first reading. 
Well, we haven't read the ordinance. I can read. I can read. I don't think I want to read the. Uh, I don't think I want to read the entire ordinance. Uh, Councilor, what the, what's the minimum uh, that we can? Uh, not the minimum, but the acceptable level of what we need to read. Well, I'll just say this is an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance tax for the incorporated area of Bull County, Commonwealth, Kentucky. Uh, specifically, uh, the Danville Black, Danville Bull County Plan and Zoning Commission conducted a public hearing for the text amendment of the zoning ordinance prescribed in the Bull County Ordinance of Bull County, Kentucky, and KRS, and uh, asking that it now be ordained by the Bull County Fiscal Court. That Article 5, uh, which encompasses page 5 4, uh, page 5 36, page 5 37, page 5 39. And is there another 5 39? Oh, sorry, it should be 38 and 39. 38 and 39. Okay, yeah. so we need to fix that. 538 5 39 of the zoning ordinance, title of Bull County zoning ordinance is hereby amended. And uh, Steve went over those changes uh, with us today. And uh, I think that's all we have. And you, you need a second reading, and I think you have to advertise that second reading. So. Right. And Judge, I, I have several notations, and, and Steve and I work together on so many things. Um, let me say on the front end, I'm virtually certain I will vote for this. Uh, but knowing that the media is monitoring what we're doing and knowing that the public has every right to know all that's going on here, um, on the whereases, on page two, on three, the media could confuse this if we don't make the point that effective date says effective on passage by the fiscal court. It's my understanding there will still be the um, Board of reading. Adjustment uh, and that they will have a public hearing as well? No, the, the ordinance you're passing is to put the text into the book. It won't Only. take effect until you all pass it. So, so the actual right of a distiller to move. They then still have to go to the Board of Adjustments through a formal hearing, file an application, pay a fee, advertise, and have a full-blown hearing on every individual site. That's why I'm bringing it up, because the media, without knowledge and hearing the discussion, or might have this and just focus on that effective end on passage, might think it's a good-to-go uh, pr proposal. Um, I'm a little bit concerned, because I don't understand on page two, number five, conflict with private deeds, and somebody has deeded property, and the ordinance provisions come in at the end and say, when the provisions of this amendment impose on that land owner a greater restriction than imposed by private agreement, that deed, the provisions of this ordinance shall say your deed is null and void. Not null and void, the zoning ordinance trumps. So, so for example, if you have a deed restriction that says you can build a 600 square foot building, the zoning ordinance says you can only build a 100 square foot building. The zoning law trumps any private deed covenants yeah. or restrictions. Okay. All right. I just, just I, yeah. This yeah, is that, how Steve and I talk on, that's on issues where I don't understand. That went in there from our attorney back with the first amendment. That's the same whereas clauses that you guys saw when you've uh, now passed three versions of the zoning ordinance. Okay. If we could move to page 537. Um, it's hard philosophically to believe as, as an individual, I can't speak for the BOA, uh, that this shall not alter the agriculture or residential character of the proposed area. Uh, I, I guess it's just my concern that it does. Uh, others might argue that. Um, and I was reading it until you explained it, that everything had to be in place on water it's as they begin their process that any of the three or four uh, it's all going to come together through an approval a plan and a permit so yeah. the the staging of whether what gets built first in a rather convoluted thing on number seven at the bottom of the page um i would hope that as good corporate citizens they might develop their own park um and i wouldn't want that precluded by the elimination by school well, here, here's the parents. problem we've got we're still trying to stay in an agricultural zone, mm -hmm. and they still have to keep this in agricultural use. Now, there could be a park or a church or other things, but really the goal here is to have 
great big storage buildings, no other real use on the property, no visitors, no, you know, it's really meant to just be storage and agricultural production. So if they wanted to spend $20,000 on a kid's park on their own property? We're not about putting visitors here. This is about storage okay. of bourbon and then I'm, keeping it as a farm. I'm good um, that. Because we wouldn't do that in the ag zone by right anyhow those other basically all visitors. this is is storage it's storage nothing else in and the ag zone only correct and then on, on the before last you, page before you go on the point of inquiry we have a motion to accept this seconded. first reading was it seconded no no i'll second before it. we go into discussion on that any depth and detail i'd like a second so seconded by magistrate short and now you. we can continue with thank you judge discussion. Uh, and on the last page unless they're raising corn or soybeans how are they going to have 50% of the property? Hay, cattle. So, so they natural. will have to have. They have to meet the definition of agricultural use under Karis 100. <coughs> Good. Which is, um, you know, it's, it's corn, soybeans, cattle, hay, timber. Well, that could be another profit center for them, too. Excellent. Staff stay at least 50% in agricultural use. And the other could be building, blacktop, and whatever. They Thank you, sir. All right, going to Absolutely. So, call a question. All right, uh, Confer, is your your citation on works? what you read uh, would constitute yeah. our first <clears throat> on this ordinance with the one change of, of page 39 to 38? I yes. Want the media just yes, on. sir. Okay. That's good. All right. Everybody understand what we have before us? Since there's no further discussion or comment, uh, call the questions been called. And all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign, the motion carries. Uh, we will advertise the second reading, and uh, that and uh, will we'll be on the agenda for the for the first uh, August session. And Judge, I want to thank you. I know this started back in January when they met with you and the mayor and others, and yeah. you yeah. all you all Across pushed us towards a, a solution here that was unique for Bull County. Appreciate that. Thank you. To the thank you guys. As well. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate yeah, what you guys do. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Next on our agenda is uh, to request. We have a request for some board appointments, which uh, Anna sent out. Uh, Steve Hammond to a four-year term. I'll make that motion, Judge. And, and, I'll Steve second Hammond. it. And uh, do you want to go through? With, uh, you yeah, want I, to do them individually or by by group? Please? Let's just do them all. I'm making motion to approve them all. And I second. That motion. Okay. Is there any? Uh, okay, it's been motions made by Match Seven, second by Match and Ellis. Discussion on the approvals is uh, presented to to the court. I've had excellent feedback on uh, Mr. Hamlin, who I don't know, uh, Mr. Uh, Jackie Trumbo, who I do not know. I do know uh, Julie K uh, Clay, just an intellectual giant, and will be a great asset on on the board. The other two, I've, I've had good feedback from several folks. Um, We're getting a lot of good nominations, uh, I will say this. And, and, yes, sir. Uh, the, the nominations from the library um, is talking with, with uh, Magistrate K. Wood. Uh, probably all the nominations have been quality nominations. Excellent. So, no further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carried. I do have before us, and we don't have to do it today. Now, I'm not familiar with this appointment, and I'm, I'm appealing to the more <laughs> senior members of the court. Uh, the Boyle County Clerk has recommended appointments to people of the County Board of Tax Appeals. Two appointments for three-year terms. Um, this is not in our list of typical board commission's appointments that we have uh, in our control. Are you, do you guys remember these appointments in the past? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, we do. So I'm told. <laughs> I'm like this. Uh, Mark Cross has been on there a long time. <coughs> yeah. Right, Murray? Yes, sir, he has. Linda Green, I believe, is new this Linda year. Green. Phil Shore has been fairly new. Yeah, well, he's been on for quite a while as well. I think he's Danville's appointment, right? Yeah. Well, I'm making a motion to approve these three, Judge. 
these are, are uh, th this this process was a little bit unfamiliar with this. So these are, I'm, I'm looking for, for advice on, from the court. Now, I am, I'm fine with these, uh, but uh, they weren't that normally on my radar screen. Let me put that one. Well, they appeal tax bill. Do what? They, 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 there's a certain amount of time, so many, when they get their assessment in the mail from the PVA, mm -hmm. there's a board that comes together. So if somebody disagrees with that assessment, they have a court, they have recourse. And so this group comes together and hears any of those appeals um, to their to the tax bill assessment. Yes, and I sit in on that. I've done that several times with the PVA. It's, you know, people that you want on that board are people that are familiar like realtors and stuff that are familiar Correct. with the property values yeah. of houses in the in the county, the city. Oh, so yes, all three of these are realtors, and uh, you're right. If it's you, an if interesting If you got a process. question, you don't. You think you've got your taxes too high? This is a board that you you contact. Okay, I understand that. So. Judge, do we know if there are any uh, lay people on here other than real estate? I have personal. I think I think the realty. Uh, uh, I don't know that. I don't know the total composition of the board. I think there's only three people on the board, and then they're paid by um, the Boyle County Fiscal Court. Fifty percent of it is paid by the Boyle County Fiscal Court, and the other half is is reimbursed. Actually, we pay the full amount, and then the Revenue cabinet reimburses us for half of their of their daily, but they usually um, it usually takes uh, two to three days at the most for them to meet and come together. We've never had any complaints about who's been on the board or how they do their job. There's I actually um, appealed my assessment just to see what they did, and um, it's it's, it's kind of a standard it's kind of a standard process that they go through and. I'm sure Chris can talk about it more, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. Definitely, you know, it's people that are not yeah. happy with, you know, paying more property tax than they, they want to pay. And Who's happy with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the reason the reason I bring up a lay person is, 40 years ago, literally, um, we had a circumstance, and one of the three that we sat with was a lay person, and I think that gave it some balance. I wouldn't vote against this today. But perhaps in the future we might think about a person who isn't tied to the real estate uh, community uh, because uh, that person seemed very much open to some arguments that we had to make on an overassessment that we we did win, in fact. Um, and so for the future, I just hope that we might consider having one of the three be a lay person. Did we get a second? Uh, I believe, if I am not mistaken, the, the motion to approve the appointments on the agenda was made and seconded, and this was part of the agenda. Yeah. I just had a separate document, so we have already technically approved it. I wanted the court to know that I didn't violate my commitment to the court for <laughs> advance notice on this because this didn't come directly from me. It's fine. It's Ann's fault. <laughs> yeah, I was not. No. Okay. All right. Next. Mike Rogers. Mike Rogers. Before we move. Yes, sir. This brings up the question of Kroger. Anything new on that particular uh, There situation? was uh, oral arguments heard last Tuesday or Wednesday in front of the Court of Appeals. Stephen Dexter uh, did that. He felt like it went really well. Okay. Uh, we don't have anything back yet. But we're kind of waiting on that for the rest of the, the years because I guess the person that was the, our claims, uh, the one in charge that dealt with other years and so forth, uh, got reassigned. So we have a, a whole new uh, person in charge of that up in the state. And, uh, she was going to have a meeting with myself and uh, the, the attorney that's representing Kroger. but. Basically, we said, you know, there's, it's kind of pointless to do that until we get uh, a ruling from from the Court of Appeals. So that's that's what we're waiting on. Chris, thank you for the update, though. So, so just to clarify, is that is that something that we will be expecting a bill from from Mr. Dexter, or or have 
Have you assumed any of those duties or? Well, his, I'm for every year except, was it 2017 or I can't remember. Okay. But that's, yeah, so he's going to send us a bill, I would, I would think, you know, that's something. Oh, yeah. That I, I think I, we already said he's doing that, and then I'm from here on out. Okay, I didn't know what, what. So, so, so he, we will, he will be going back to court again. I don't know. I mean, the Court of Appeals, you know, they'll, they'll make some kind of ruling. They okay. can say, send it back down to the circuit court to make some other decision, right. or they can make a ruling, and then if this uh, guy, the attorney and Kroger don't, doesn't like it, I mean, I guess they could try to appeal it to the okay. Supreme Court, yeah. so that's probably what would happen. <laughs> so so we, we are going to be expecting probably more than one bill from him moving forward. Okay, I just wanted to just know what to expect. Thank you. All right, Mike. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, members of the court. Uh, here today to request uh, your consideration of, uh, of posting a full-time paramedic position. We have uh, uh, one of our paramedics that has uh, is going to leave and go fly for Aerie back here in Daniel. So, uh, appreciate sure. that consideration. Yeah, you know, just need the court's approval to advertise. Second. Motion made by Master Cullen, second by Master Kaywood to approve for the advertisement of a paramedic position. For the county. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those like sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Next one. Thank you, Judge. The, the last thing I have on the agenda today is just a request uh, approval to fix EC4. The transmission uh, is out. Uh, it's at a and you know, it was at A&M Diesel to, to be repaired. The, top, the cost is uh, $3,982.43. This is similar to the EC3, I think it was three. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the Jasper transmission with a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. And, and for these, unfortunately, these these buggies that we bought had a, to me, and we're learning a lot from this respect for the next time, that their transmission are, are not suited for the weight that it's mm here. -hmm. I'll make that motion. Say A uh, motion made by Master Gaines, second by Master Ellis. In discussion? Uh, it, it oh, no. Oh. It doesn't matter. I think we both got it. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Is it okay to leave it the way it is? It's on me. Okay. Discussion? Nope. All those in favor of approving uh, the uh, the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Judge. How many buggies you down right now? Uh, last check, we're, we're all, all are in service, so. While, while Mike is here, I just I'll let the court know that uh, I did sign for the um, to move forward on the striker equipment. Good. And uh, so that's uh, three new beds, three new stretchers, three new uh, power lifts. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Judge. Mike, do we have any questions? Yes, sir. Do we have anyone in in, in school now for? Paramedic. No, um, we're hoping to, uh, uh, it'll be on the agenda here soon to, to send uh, one of our EMTs. Uh, the class starts again in August, so. The lady that we had in school, is she uh, back with you as a paramedic? Or yeah, what? yeah, yeah. She's working. She's on duty today, actually. Okay, what about the uh, the guy from, from Harrisburg, the young guy? Devin the, Mukes, yeah. He's, uh, Mukes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He, he, he worked yesterday. He's paramedic now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you all. Thank you, Appreciate you. The, the striker the, um, equipment was discussed in a recent KGO online training I attended with the KGO and the workers' comp. Somebody asked a question, I think a judge, a county judge asked a question about uh, if it would benefit uh, in their overall rating and reduce our insurance premium cost. And I guess the answer was it, it doesn't necessarily directly reduce the cost, but it, it helps add to your safety score and your, and your points. It has to add to your safety score. Yeah, and so. Because so you, you're exposing, you're exposing potentially a lot less people. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Mary, you cold? No, I'm fine. Okay. And thank you all. Okay, thank you. Ms. Angie? There you are. Here I am. Good morning. 
Good morning. morning. How is everybody? Great. I'd be better if I didn't have to wear this mask. <laughs> but anyway. All right, you've all got copies of the grants that I received. Um, the first one being the Hazardous Household Waste Grant. Um, we're actually going to do, I'm going to do something a little bit different this year with the HHW. It'll still be the same, but I am going to work with WHIR and do radio days on that Saturday also. It'll be August the 29th is going to be the Hazardous Household Waste event. It's going to be out there at the Recycling Center. It's not going to be at the fairgrounds. I'm going to have them set up and, you know, you bring your Hazardous Household Waste stuff, uh, get you a burger, get you a drink, and we're going to try to, I want to try to promote more people using that. So that's about that. Any questions? What time are you? Uh, it'll probably be 8.30 to 1.30. Sorry about that. There'll well, be more out, so. Well, they include paint and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Also. That's your paint and your oils and your chemical, your Roundup and stuff like that. Just anything that shouldn't be in the landfill. Tires. You want to bring your tires? No, you cannot bring tires. <laughs> I thought he said guitar. <laughs> no, I know that tire word. I, I know what it, yeah. I know I, I I know that tire word. No, they wouldn't stay long if they let me sing. So. <laughs> but I guess I need approval from you all to accept. Yeah, let's do this. Do, there's three that she's going to discuss. We'll do them one at a time. And uh so I entertain a motion, a motion to approve, to approve the household waste grant. Second. Okay. A motion. All right, made by Magistrate <coughs> Sammons and seconded by I didn't K -Wood. Uh, K Wood. Okay, thank you. Uh, discussion on that. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed light sign. Motion carries. All right, next, Miss Angie. Uh, we have the recycling grant. Um, we basically got funded for everything except for a paper cutter. Uh, the skid steer is already up there. We've already purchased that and it's in place. Um, everything else is just being worked on right now. Um, any questions with that? Make a motion to approve it. Second it. Motion to approve, Magistrate Simmons. The second the motion short discussion. All those are approving the 2021 recycling grant. Uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. And I like getting all this money. <laughs> <laughs> the next one. This is the composting grant that we applied for. Um, as you see, we basically got funded to, for composting. Uh, what I'm going to do with it yet, I don't know. I will find a project because we done, I... We haven't done composting in the past, have we? No. No. So where you intend to put it? I don't know that yet. I'm hoping to either find a spot that we can do our animal composting or I'm going to do food composting. I'm going to find a composting project to do. Because a hundred and forty-four thousand dollars is too much to give it back away. You know, we're looking understand. at a piece of equipment for eighty-eight thousand dollars that can be used. I don't understand when you mention animal composting. I thought we were long past that. This was applied for way before we ever passed we're, it. We're past the locations. That yeah, we that's all. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're past but we're the location. Past, but we're not past animal composting. But well, there's all understand. elsewhere. That's oh, what we're having to do right now. We're on the network. Tri Cake will only take so much before they start jacking up the prices. We got to figure out a solution to this problem still. So, but I agree with Angie. We don't need to give this back, especially if we can find other means for it, whether it's food composting or, whatever, or Exactly. I'm going to, I'm going to not, find a means for it. We can't close the door on animal composting. We have too big of a problem. I just don't want to close the door on, you know, a big wheel loader that's, you know, a piece of equipment for the county and everything that, you know, we can do with it. We can do something with it. You know, and I've got a, you know, I've got the year to decide. And of course, well, everybody will be involved when I do, so. If eventually we have to move toward animal composting, 
I know there are five or six farmers who are interested for their land. That's something I tried to make a point of early on three or four months ago, and I know that the mayor of Perryville is one of those who told me that he knows of five or six farmers who would do it on their private land. Yeah, where um, are you going to get the money to pay them for what they want? What are we doing right now? I mean, we we can't right give now. a private if, citizen grant money. No, we can't do that. That's against the law. I mean, if they want to try to lease us a piece of property or and that, that's something like that, then they can contact me. But you know, exactly. as far as giving them anything, I can't give them. I, I didn't suggest that at all. That was not in my intent. Well, if they were interested, then they would. They should call me. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the composting grant. I'll second it. Thank you. Okay. Motion made uh, by Mayor Gay to approve and second to measure short discussion. All right, there being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. I abstain. Absta well, one abstention. Is You're welcome, right Phil, by the way. I'm sorry. You're one, welcome. One opposed. Your lot's done. There, was oh, there, was there an opposed you. vote? Although you he abstained. He abstained. I abstained. Okay, I'm sorry. I want more information before we move forward. Thank you, Angie. Right, thank you, Angie. Wait a minute, wait a minute before she leaves. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for the hard work you're doing on that grass out there. I know it's aggravating to you. Well, I just got to keep up with him. He's he yes. don't. I know what we're going to do in the future. I mean, if, if I'll just anyway, have to. We'll just have to keep an eye on it. As soon as it gets 15 inches, we'll just grass. have to. Those, he doesn't realize, the guy that owns the property doesn't realize how fast that Johnson grace will grow. Oh, overnight? Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. You know that being a farmer. Six feet high. We and, just uh, talking about. But Angie has worried and worked with that, and I've got people calling me, and I like, I hope I haven't aggravated you. No, you're fine. That's what I'm there for. So uh, I appreciate you getting it done. Who cut it? Uh, Webby actually cut it for me. Oh, did he? Mm-hmm. Okay. But he owns another spot now that's now across gonna, the way that I look to be that way well, too. So the neighbors have been cutting that spot across the street there. Well, they're, I, my understanding is they're going to quit cutting it. They are. John uh, Feather told me the other night. He called me. Said that he does, and he's he uh, he's never got to thank you for it. So I believe he's. No, they cut it forever. They've cut it for several years. Mm -hmm. Been there and done that. Now we uh, <laughs> we're going. Are we sending him a bill? Oh yes, he'll get a bill from me. He'll there'll be a bill. He'll have thirty days to pay that bill. If not, then I'll put a lien on the property. Okay, good. Thank you very but much. But it is done. Well, thanks, Angie. Thank, thank you. you. I want to thank you for your hard work. Thank you. And thank also you. for taking it. care of that on Stewart's Lane for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Let's see what's next. Uh, Dwayne, you want a surplus a copier? Yeah, this is housekeeping. I probably didn't need to hear my friends. You want to see me anyway? <laughs> Would you give it a copy or somebody? <laughs> well, I would be taking it. Made the motion. This is it. They were taking it. Okay, motion made by Mr. Cullen. Section of Magic, Magic <laughs> Gate to surplus a copy of public works. Yeah. Is there any right. questions, comments, discussion? All those in favor of the signal saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Is Jeremy not with the state anymore? He's working at home. Okay. He, yeah. yeah. So you can't, you can't call me. Goggin on that. There's a, if you go down Goggin right past like my neighborhood on both sides, you'll see where it looks like cars are going off the side. I just talked to them late. I, I, went out, I finally went out there and found it myself, so I just talked to them late last week about that. Okay, yeah, there's down towards... Just, just, as you, just you pull out Riverview to the right, yeah. on the right, I mean. Yeah, well, but even before Riverview, though, there's some other spots there where it just it drops down pretty fast. Oh, coming around that curve? Yeah. Okay, I didn't yeah, talk, so to, didn't they, talk if, to him about that. So. If they could take a look from Clark's Run up past Riverview, that'd be great. Okay, okay. Another concern, too, out there on Ghost Pike is where Ghost Pike goes into Lancaster Road. Yes. 52. There's trees and stuff there you cannot see to get out. I know it's a state problem, but you can't see to get oh, out on 52. Goggin. That's Goggin. I'm sorry, Goggin. Goggin. I, I addressed yeah. that with him. I, I talked to him I, about that. I asked him to look at that this morning. Because I've been a lovely that. constituent out there that yeah. that, uh, that brought that to my attention. Two three that's people's a, done almost got hit out there because yeah. you got to stick the nose out to even see. Okay. Mm -hmm. I sent him. I sent him a picture of it. Okay. But yeah, one of my favorite constituents brought that up. Yeah. I spoke you to him. I, I finally yeah, called up with him this morning on that. So. She just need you need. Well, you got the same problem. You both have low cars now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
I don't know how you get in and out of that car. Yeah, that's He's got a little power list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a striker? Yeah, it's a striker. That's, that's how we, we got this deal. So. The thing about that spot is they'll have to go out there and cut that by hand because that gentleman will not like it if they take that big, uh -uh. big no, whacker to all those pretty little trees property. down to there. Because it's mainly trees that he planted along the inside of the fence row, but they've spread it out and they've grown out over the right of way. Yeah. Yeah. There's another place too out on where I live, White Oak. You know, right where I live at, there, come around that curve, there, you know, that is growed up again where the state needs to, okay. you, you can't see cars okay. coming from that way. And they, you know, they fly down through there yeah. when they come around that curve. I had a guy turn, a boy the other day wrecked and turned upside down right in my driveway. Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, but pulling out of there, you, I mean, there, you, you can't see, you know, if anything's coming. So you really, you kind of got to listen. Coming. And, and, and I'll pass that on to them. They have the same problem we have. They can't keep their slope mower, long, long arm yeah. mower going, running. They have the same issues. But then their other issue is they only have one for the whole district. No. They don't have one just for Boyle County. Mm, so we they get have our to get on the list. Did we get the one yeah. other? Well, we, we did, but it's down again now. Oh, oh. Well, that's something we've got to look at. Really. We're checking into it again. It's, it's just the it's, whole it's rings about, around. It's about to admit its useful life. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. something yeah. we have to have with the county. Yeah. We've got to so have we've, that. We've, we've and where are we at with your park? Anything on that park stuff? They're, no, they're not doing anything with it right now. Right. The weather been so hot, they just it just been too hot to get up there for it. Right. But it's sitting there. Yeah, the equipment the, was delivered. Yeah, it's delivered, <laughs> so. Let, let me know. I'll come oh, well, I'll let you know. I'll help. Well, they supposed to let me know when they get want to get started on it. So. Yeah, please let but me. But I'll let you know. Thank right. you. Yeah, COVID and the hot weather combined. Same thing on Perryville, getting over to uh, the park down here. And yeah, yeah. Equipment surplus. It creates problems. It creates you problems. Can't, no, it's it's mainly well. COVID. Hot metal equipment. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to have EMS. Mary and I agree. That stuff's great birds. stuff, right? Those slides. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're getting off script a little right, bit. I'm uh, sorry. Oh, I, I, I figured there'd be questions, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you much. Uh, next, we have the acknowledgement of, of things we've talked about previously. Both the sheriff and the county clerk are out of the building today. I can get representation if you want to talk to anybody, but this is basically an acknowledgement of the county clerk's second quarter report which you should have in your packet i'll make that motion and uh, we have a motion to acknowledge receipt and made by magic cullen second of the magic gay and is there any discussion on on this before we uh, vote to accept or acknowledge that uh, second quarter report if not then all those in favor signify by saying aye aye opposed like so Motion carries, and then we have a second one, which uh, the sheriff has presented in the past uh, to acknowledge uh, his his uh, second quarter motion report. report. Mm -hmm. and motion. motion made by Matthew Gate to acknowledge the sheriff's second quarter report, and uh, was uh, seconded by Matthew Cullen. Any discussion on on the acknowledgement of the sheriff's report? I have um, a final page that was given to me last night where um, their administrative uh, person down there reclassified some revenue, which is not uncommon. Um, so it, that's, it doesn't change any of the figures in the bot, I mean, in, in the balances um, of the report, but there was a little revenue. If anybody's interested in knowing what that revenue reclassification is, you can come visit with me. All right. Can we just come visit with you? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. You ain't got that bad to talk about. Stay back Stay six, six feet. We have a lot to talk about. Okay. All those in favor of acknowledging the, the sheriff's second quarter report, second five saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Most curious. Thank you for that. Miss Shannon Green. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Well, if, if you'll notice in your packets, I put a summary and two quotes for timekeeping systems. Um, we'd like to um, at request approval to enter into a timekeeping system. And what, I don't understand what you're talking about. Like time clocks. And they'll time be able clock. to use, there'll be three time clocks 
and then every, other will people. Will be? EMS in that the government service building, the courthouse, and the jail. The jail. And then others will be able to use their phone with a computer. GPS or uh, their computer. With permission. With permission. With permission. So like you, you, you're talking about the road department and EMS using the same one. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't have a problem with that. Why? Uh, I don't understand why we need. I, I, I've got to be sold on this because I'm not. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know other places like maybe the jail really needs it, but EMS and the road department, they're scheduled where they run in and out. You take the road department, for example. Mm -hmm. If Dwayne's got. Most of some of our guys live over in the Falkland area, as you well mm -hmm. know. Okay, we're working a snowstorm, okay? They're out there in the middle of the night. Wayne says, okay, you're through going home. Well, now they've got to come back to... No, they no. don't. No, they don't. Well, and they Dwayne can log them in and out no. himself. During those special activities, this is basically a scheduler. So what happens is that the jail and EMS can use it to actually do... Um, future scheduling of shifts and it makes it real easy for everybody and everybody can go online to see when they're going to be working and then they they can access and request time off without having to actually meet with a supervisor and go through all that they can request it to the supervisor um, in addition to that um, the department has has the ability to on occasion modify those those times in and out but if on a regular day when the road department comes in to work, they're going to come in because they always have a morning meeting because they always know what they need to do for the day, and they will come in, they will clock in, and then when they're ready to go home after they come back in, they will clock out. And, and that's how that system is going to work with the jail, with EMS, with the road department, with courthouse staff themselves, and... Um, and it's gonna and it's gonna save us money. It integrates all of this, so they're not keeping manual timesheets anymore. We're not writing this stuff down on a piece of paper. So it's automatically keeping all this information and it's uploading it to Dwayne or Mike. Mike reviews it and if he agrees with it, then it's sent on to Shannon. Shannon runs a little program and it and it populates the payroll system, so it cuts out this whole data entry thing. And now we freed up Shannon's time to be able to do more things with a lot of other projects that she could be working on. How many well, locations? Three. Three yeah. actual time clocks. The well, shares. What's actually going to cost us? Well, well okay. when you, when you amortize everything out, the first the Nova time would be eighty nine thousand eight sixty eight, and Kronos would be seventy two thousand five forty seven over the five year contract. My, my question is, um, how have we operated since 1842? Um, uh, and, and with trust of employees and good management by our people, um, I, I just got, I have reservations about it. Well, well, what's your, your department heads would like to have it. It's your department heads. The jail too. specifically asked. I can and understand the, the jail. Yeah. So I'll make a motion we approve the Kronos <laughs> timekeeping system. Uh, lower mm -hmm. of the two. Uh, well, are there no Kentucky or uh, excuse me, Judge? Looking for a second. We have a motion. Is there a second to the motion? I second it. Okay, they're made by Marshall Gay is to approve the Chronos bid, and I think I saw John raise his hand first. So second by Marshall K. Wood. Now let's discuss. Uh, let's discuss. The, uh, both, promotion. both of these entities are way out of Kentucky, and, and I know from my corporate experience there are Kentucky companies. I uh, didn't find any that would integrate with our system already, the KBS. These two would. Which is That's a right. huge, big, big uh, deal. I understood what Mary was saying, yeah. Because the data entry is done, and then I have to sit down after the payroll is complete, I go through all those timesheets as well because, as you know, when you do things manually, um, there are errors that can, can be found, and some of them can be substantial in nature that, just, that are just missed. I mean, you know, it's just human error, and this eliminates that, and it streamlines things. It brings us up into the 21st century with the rest of what everybody else is doing. You know, I, 
I'd be hard pressed to know another place that's using, um, you know, handwritten um, timesheet. Uh, to answer Master Salmon's concern earlier, to say that uh, the guys are going out at uh, one o'clock in the morning, twelve o'clock in the morning to remove snow. Uh, with uh, the approval, either Dwayne can log them in, who he's assigned, or they can, if he gives them permission, they can log in from their, their smartphone or their computer at home and log back out when they're off ship. Mm -hmm. Say Webb or anybody, uh, Scooter or any of them want to come in at 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning because it's cooler to get weed eating done or work in the morning when it's cooler, and leave eight hours later, they can do that, and with the, with with the the director's approval, it has tremendous flexibility, and I I, I will I will ask that uh, Master Short and Kaywood who sit through the meetings, also uh, that's what impressed me as much as anything, Cronus, they both have far more capability than we really need. We'll ever use. But, that, but this is, gives a great, deal, great degree of flexibility and ownership of everybody's time mm -hmm. in a better way than we have. And you know, I, I learned terms in the presentations I didn't know, like buddy punching. Mm -hmm. Buddy punching is if you can't go in and, and clock in for him because there, there's mechanisms or protocols set up in the software that don't allow it. Well, that was part of my experience way back when I carried a union car. Yeah, you can do. You know, people could punch in for you when I was working at GE. You they had a time clock. Get, hey, I'm going to park the car. You park, punch me in for me. So. But this is so user-friendly. User it it, it mean, really is. It's, it's user-friendly uh, as long as you got a little idea technology. Yeah. Well, most which, people do it. eliminated me, however. <laughs> we'll let you have somebody buddy punch you in. Phil, but you the, and I could never clock in. But the but anyway, committee, but we, we when, recommended this. When, when you consider the number of employees that we have, this is much more efficient so than the present system. Control? Oh. No, the cost of the initial setup no. fee is just from Let that okay. That bring, kind of brings. But me they in. can do it on a computer. They can do it on a computer at the office. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're going to be doing it on a computer in the office. So they will have it. Yeah. Yes, it just won't be the clock. It's the the digital yeah, clock all, itself. All your entities in your county will have access to this. Yes. Time clock. So have you looked at some of the web-based versions instead these of? These are ways. These are web-based. Yeah. These no, are I understand. I yeah. Oh. I understand this whole thing. I, I okay. deal with this every day. So, and, and I used to do it when I did HR stuff as well. So, but I'm, I'm saying, like, there's other ones out there. I mean, not, not, I mean mine's, my, my restaurant's a little simpler than, than what the, the county government goes through, but I know the same people I use. Uh, it's called Homebase. They, all I need to buy is an iPad. But does it, con the biggest part of this is converting this yeah. data to KBS's yeah. data input. And so so my, it eliminates. An hour and a half to two hours of just heads down data entry. I, I, I heard that, so that's my question: is that how how did you do this search? Did you go through KB? KBS. I, I talked to KBS. I heard KBS. I talked to KBS. I talked to other HR county HR people that use timekeeping systems to see which ones would integrate with KBS. And these were the two that they recommended, said they will definitely integrate. And they love them. They Did love you the contact systems. KCO to find out how many counties are doing time yeah. clocks? I don't See, think that they have that data. They don't, oh, they don't I, survey that data. They, they could find that in a heartbeat, though. I, I, I'm just uncomfortable until we get a little more information. I, I'm OK with, with switching to this. Yeah. With, but I want to make sure we're doing it right, because I mean, you're talking $1,000 a month and then $10,000 for the setup versus, you know, if you were to go to something where it's more simplistic, that if it do, did work with KBS, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense if it doesn't, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll try and look into this other one to see if it works with KBS, but... Um, with magic, but, with magic. I mean, I'm, I'm, you're talking like $210 for a month for the service for three locations, so... 
does it do advanced scheduling? Because one of the things the jail and EMS and the sheriff's department would like to have is the ability to do advanced scheduling. And then what happens is, is the employee can get online and they can actually request time off, but they can also do shift swatching on their own. And so that eliminates that type of work on a management um, and it, it alleviates all, yeah. I do it all through my phone. Yeah. I do it all through my iPad. Yeah, see, so you they understand do, the ease and They do it all through their ability. phones. Yeah. They, they actually, as soon as they hit a certain point in my restaurant, they automatically get clocked yeah. in. So, yeah. but some of these, I mean, Kronos, I remember from when I worked for a company back in the 90s uh, in California. So that's who we used to use or whatever. And it's just kind of like some of the other ones. These web-based opportunities are eliminating some of these other, like these Kronos, where you have to buy all of their packaging and stuff like that. That's, that's, my, that's the biggest waste to see here. I mean... Uh, is this an extremely valuable tool for you and for Mary and for everyone else in the county? Heck, yeah, I'm, I'm ashamed we're not using something like this already. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'll make a quick phone call and see, but uh, if nothing, then yes, I'll go ahead and, and with, my appreciate that. with Magistrate Kaywood's comments about technology, and some of us are very limited in our, on our ability to use it, um, I'd like to make the privilege motion that we lay this on the table and get a little more information between now and our next meeting or perhaps two meetings out. There was a motion. But that's a privileged motion laying on the table. Sorry, what? I don't know. It what takes kind of, precedence. What kind, of what kind of information do you need? Well, I think we've just heard that there are others out there. I think we can find out some things from Keiko. Um, I, I understand this concept of integrating with systems that we have. But we've, we've operated for decades without one, more than decades, and I think another month to get some do, more information they do might a cost be valuable. analysis? Because I think that's a better part of this question, of what we would save. Do, yeah, do we have an ROI on this? Because well, that's interesting you should ask that, because I think that's a question we should ask regularly with anything that we do. Amen. And we do not do that here. But we can, we can work in, into that. Um, and see, but they, they're going to have to do that for us. I mean, I guess if you're asking us to do an in depth study of, of where we can get a return on our investment, that would be an obligation of the vendors. I'm not, I'm not looking for, okay. for that in depth of a study. I'm just saying that if we're going to spend a thousand dollars a month, are we going to get that thousand dollars back in your time and your time and the department head time? Is that was that brought, usually when they do a, a presentation like this, they'll tell you, okay. The it other thing is, is, I have to caution you about using Keiko, because you understand when I sit in a room of county treasurers, and you start talking about um, computers and networks, there's probably 50% of the people I sit in a room with that don't even have a network system because their county can't afford an IT person. So we've got to be real careful about I don't we think target. Keiko would provide any information. No, they, on, that's on not something they do. Out. And I've worked with Keiko for 30 years. So I'm wondering just, how uh, you're talking about with the county employees. I don't know that it has. She's not listening. Does KBS stand for something? No, it's, I, well, it may, but it's K, and it's like victory and system. You know, it's oh, Kentucky K victory B. system. You're talking about, Shannon, about mm -hmm. some of our employees doing this and doing that on the computer and so on. Survey the uh, road department, for example, see how many of them really savvy the uh, knowledge and so on about getting on and doing what you're asking them to do. And, and time-wise, and they won't do See, I've done a survey, I guess it's been probably two years ago, during our health fair, of who all used smartphones, who used computers. 90% of our staff uses a smartphone or a computer. It's, it's not hard to do, I mean. Mm -mm. It's really not hard. All, all they're going to do is be assigned a, a number that they punch in. I'm late, like, Tom. We've been doing it since, what, 1840? Here we... <laughs> I, I, I just really like to have a cost analysis because $72,000 is the underbid, and that's still a tremendous $1,440 a month. Do we think we're going to save that much money, or do we have employees out there cheating on their time? No, I don't think it's, it's not just the employees cheating on their time. It's, it's more about moving forward in a technology-fashioned environment where we streamline work, which cuts out 
doing tedious daily work out of a manager's, out of an employee sitting down. The road department all sit down at the same time and they fill out their timesheets and it probably takes them an hour or something to sit down and fill out all their dates at the top and then they put in their time in and then their time out for lunch and because a lot of our employees are not keeping daily timesheets. I look at timesheets and have to send them back to employees even in the courthouse because um, they, they may have taken an afternoon off and I've done it myself and not, and not even wrote it down because you do your timesheet two weeks after you're actually doing a daily, you're not keeping a regular daily schedule. And I so you're trying how, many I, how many times do I have to call and say, did you work on the holiday? Because they'll write their time in and out on the holiday. Judge, they weren't with, here. with my effort for a privileged motion to table for one month, and I won't say two, but for one month, um, if we could get a second to that, I'd like to vote to see if we suspend this for one month to do some more studying. If, but I, I need a second on that motion. I'll second that, Tom. Uh, at least then call a vote on the privileged motion of suspending it. Yeah, I would just like to say that the personnel committee has reviewed this, the treasurers reviewed this, the HR persons reviewed this, reviewed this. It sounds like all the department heads are asking for this type of system, so I hope we can go ahead and move Would forward. you like to hear a letter from the department heads about their, their willingness to participate with this system? I think that would help. Yeah. So what is connected? I, I think there's another another word that hasn't been used is accuracy and that really hasn't been thrown out there as a desired mission but accuracy yeah. really is part of the plan to me it's a it's an efficient management of time of our yeah. employees and that's what i think is a goal of all of us mm -hmm. that, that all of the uh, anybody that's, that has employees you want them to work as efficiently yeah. as you yeah. as they possibly can this adds that element to it Call a question on privilege motion. I, I can. All right. I just, I just need to guard you, that, and, and I understand wanting a return or understanding what kind of benefits you're going to gain from this, from doing this, but, you know, we have to guard ourselves from wanting to continue to do things from as, how we did them back in the 60s and 70s, because time moves on and... I, I have been with the county for a long, long time and have built our biz, internal business system in times when um, certain fiscal courts and judges wanted to move and hire additional people for certain things. And I would say, wait, let's get this in place before we start hiring people to see about the efficiency and the effectiveness of the employee in that position before we move forward. I would never recommend something like that I didn't think would improve the efficiency of the employee, the, de the supervisor, the manager, the, the department head, the HR department, and the treasurer's department. And that's all the treasurer has to say about that. And I respect that. And I, I agree with John. I mean, I can tell you from personal experience, when I first started managing and owning the hub, I, I did everything on an Excel spreadsheet. And that would take me hours, and then I would have to email it out and print it and stuff like that, which, <coughs> that's, which is probably more than what, more advanced than what, what's going on now. Now I have this integrated timekeeping system. The employees can request time off. I mean, the, the, the amount of time that it freed up for me is, is, is amazing. My, my question is making sure we're not <coughs> using old Yet Okay, let's, uh, the motion of privilege is, is before us. Um, it's been seconded, so we'll vote on that. The motion of privilege involves tabling this vote on a timekeeping system for until the next court session. Yes, sir. So uh, I will ask for a raise of hands. Are those in favor of, of tabling this to, for, for two weeks? All those in favor of tabling for two weeks, raise your hand. All right. Those opposed to tabling it for two weeks, raise your hand. The motion of privilege fails, four to two. Thank you, Judge. I'll call a question on the other motion. The, the question has been called on the motion to approve the recommended 
Cronus time system for approval. Is that correct? Is there a second to that Seconded. motion? Seconded by Magistrate Short. Magistrate Gay is the one that made the motion. Now, we've had a lot of discussion. Do we need to have a, a period of discussion on the motion? I'll ask for the same thing by virtue of raising your hand. All those are in favor of approving the motion to approve Crows as a timekeeping system to approve the efficiency of timekeeping in the county and scheduling. <clears throat> Vote by raising your hand, right hand, left hand, in the main case may be. I see four hands raised. Opposed, raise those hands. Two. Uh, the, the motion passes four to two by raising the hands. Okay? Judge, my only two cents is I'll give you a name of two companies Wait. I know. And a lot of this is just mm -hmm. you're not buying their equipment. Okay? You're using their software. Kind of like we've done with a lot of things. But the horse is out of the barn. Tom, let me just... mm -hmm. and, and we can make an amendment here that if this is better, that they can bring it back to us, Sam. Doesn't mean that just because we voted on it means that they're running out the door. The only thing I'm asking is look into these two companies, ones they, that may or may not work for this KVS. I don't know. From a technical standpoint, we approved it. We've already approved it. Let's move on to something else. From a legal standpoint, Chris, have we not approved hiring Cronus? You approved it, 42. Then, then we can't do what. Magistrate Cullen is talking about. So you guys are not allowed to do anything outside of Kronos. Is that what I'm understanding? Because what you're saying, Tom, is ridiculous right now. It's ridiculous, it's ridiculous. but it's legal. All I've asked is that, here, here's two others. They can come back in two weeks where we've approved this and say, hey, we did find this a cheaper thing. We've done it before where we've come back on things. So I think you'd be challenged by Kronos now. Uh, well, Kronos is not in the paper, right? Well, well, all right. right so moving to the next one. Uh, well, well, we Request okay. approval of the Daughters of American Revolution to remove, refurbish, reinstall the Courthouse Revolutionary War plaque by adding additional names to the plaque. There is in your packet a letter of support from the Boyle County Genealogy and Historical Society. I know this is a little bit unusual, but the Daughters of American Revolution have asked through... Uh, Judy C. Wiki, their local president, chapter president, for a letter of support from the physical court because the plaque resides on the courthouse. So that is what uh, I would entertain a motion so to, uh, to, to support their approval of the DAR uh, process. Second. And uh, motion made by Magistrate Ellis and seconded by Magistrate Salmons. Is there any discussion on this before the court? Judge, uh, yes. I, I should reveal that my wife is a board member of the DAR, um, and these two extraordinary people on the letter that we're holding in front of us, um, if, if folks in this room, and many do, understand the incredible number of hours that are put in by both uh, Carolyn Crabtree and Brenda Edwards on behalf of this community in identifying uh, graveyards that nobody knew existed, uh, folks who are in those graveyards and doing the genealogical research. Uh, we are a privileged community to have these two folks helping us on these sorts of things. And likewise, on preparing this, they're finding that we're sitting here today because other rev veterans of the Revolutionary War who are not on that beautiful plaque out there uh, need to be included. And so... Um, I just, I just can't think of a better thing for us to uh, allow the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution to help us out with. So will there be a cost? Not to the county. Okay. The DAR is, is, is assuming the cost for the uh, repurposing and name additions to the plaque. Call for the question. All right. All those in favor of approval of uh, the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Treasurer Conley, looks like it's paid on the agenda. Your time for. Um, so I'm pleased to present the year end financial statement. Um, and, and keep in mind, I, I think I've cleaned it all up, um, and this is. 
the month end, the June month end. Um, I have yet to submit the quarter, so I've got a, 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 some additional work just to make sure things don't have to be reclassified for the final quarterly upload to the Department for Local Government because that's the, that's the one that's on file and that's the one that the auditors use, and so any changes made after that are, are non-existent. So with that being said, um, I feel real confident about the financial statements that I'm submitting here. And just as, I guess, a comment, everybody received the last spreadsheet during the budget preparation time, and you saw where we were going to carry over. I thought, like, because we adjusted the actual tax revenue and moved it up substantially from what we had thought before the first reading, because um, we were talking about a $600,000 shortfall and, and um, that didn't happen because of our final collections. Um, and in comparing your revenue and expenses with the final um, um, second reading budget uh, spreadsheet, um, I am pleased to say that um, we actually are going to settle in at around $185,000 over what was projected in that spreadsheet. So you can see there that um, we're going to end the year with a $4,384,000 um, carryover. Keep in mind that there's a large portion of that that is, um, I'm talking about hundreds um, of thousands of dollars that are, that are um, funds that have been received at the end of the year that are earmarked or dedicated funds that are to be spent for certain projects in the following year, which is the year that we're in. So that full 4384, and I will be preparing, um, you know, the carryover analysis that's required um, by GASB uh, for this fiscal court and a recommended um, minimum carryover amount that the fiscal court needs to consider as you move forward throughout the fiscal year not to dip below um, not that you would do that and your budget doesn't allow that um, to a certain extent but um, yeah I'm pleased that we're going to be carrying over um, um, the four million three hundred eighty four thousand uh, dollars unfortunate we did have a finance committee meeting um, scheduled the first week of July that um, I, I guess everybody forgot about. Right. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right, because I was all prepared enough. Like, you know, I should have probably called Phil and, and, and you, Jamie, um, just to make sure you remembered. And, and, um, but then I figured you were busy, so it's all good. Because that's we will. Up on us there. That I know. That's, that's, that's Jamie's fault. That's right. I'll, take, I'll take the blame. It's my fault. Jamie's the chairman. Jamie's the chairman, so I'm not at blame. But I still would like to. But I still would like to. Uh, that's a meeting. We'll have a meeting. I would still like to do that, and the judge will be following up with setting a meeting, not only for this, but for another um, item. Um, and well, it's actually so, uh, a number uh, two point on the agenda under under your under your uh, is to set up a, a financial committee meeting oh. regarding the CARES FEMA difference of, of request for reimbursement that you guys need to be a major player in. I would like to go ahead and set that meeting time up today so we can get moving on that. Uh, so uh, look at your calendars and tell me your availability uh, today's Tuesday uh, going forward from this date. I know that uh, for a finance uh, committee meeting. I think Magistrate Sammons is usually busy like on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays in the morning, aren't you? Correct. What does next Tuesday look like? Everybody next Tuesday. Yeah, that looks good for me. Yeah. What's, the, what's that day? The 4th, August 4th. 9 o'clock Tuesday, August 4th. That's good for me. August 4th at 9 o'clock. Good. Right here. You won't call me. <laughs> if, we, if we had that, if we had that new type system working, it would be on your. You'd be knowing about it. It wouldn't be for me, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to punch an old blankety blank time clock. You don't have to, Phil. You don't have to, Phil. I'm elected official. I don't care. There you so. go. Thank you, man. You're welcome. So that if you'll bring Great. that back with you, um, that I, that gives you an opportunity. And there's three. 
actually two different types of funding. There's the CARES Act, which is at the header, and as you move through, then there's the FEMA. So Jamie, you um, study us real well. We need so to we'll talk about make it look good. <laughs> Alright, anything else? My back's getting tired of carrying you. <laughs> you get oh, you he ain't heavy, he's your brother. Do we, on, on the, on the financial, is that just an acknowledgement? Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. just an acknowledgement. Alright, so moved. And everybody should have a full, detailed copy of revenue and expenditures, budget, and the annual budget, and, and the annual expenditures and any over or under budget that, um, and, and budget transfers that we did through the year. That's what you're going to see on your June 30th financial statement. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And, and would you mind making that notification to whoever we need to notify? Please. Thank you. Uh, next are committee reports, last day, of, uh, uh, last meeting of the month. So we'll go around the room and we'll start with uh, District One. Uh, who's got the Who's got some committee reports? None. None. Uh, Brother Short. Uh, yeah, let me see here. On uh, 7 9 2020 at 10 a.m., we had a personnel committee meeting. Uh, John K. Wood, myself, Judge Hunt, Mary Conley, and Shannon Green, uh, we met on the Nova Time, Time Clock software. We had a presentation. It was really, really impressive, wasn't it? But yeah, it was well, so much to take well, in. And, uh, but uh, we did that on the 9th, then the 16th, we had a per another personnel committee. John K. Wood, myself, Judge Hunt, Mary Connolly, Shannon Green, we met here at 10 o'clock and went over the uh, Cornos uh, timekeeping software presentation. And uh, that's really what we recommended was uh, was that software. And it was so, you know, it was friendly, use, usable. Uh, and we put our overtime in on the software. So yeah, 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 we checks in the mail, Ron. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's Psychic income. <laughs> And I would, you accept the uh, committee reports? Uh, motion. You made a motion to approve the, the uh, committee reports and uh, second made by Major Short, second by Major K. Wood. Any discussion? All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those like signs, motion carries. Thanks. Next. Who's next? Committee reports. I got one. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> we met on July, John, uh, July 14th. Uh, with myself, John, Judge, several others came along because we were looking at the striker stuff. Uh, we discussed new hires, part-time EMT, Joshua Ryder, and paramedic Matt White. Um, we talked about rec rate changes, uh, recommendations come from the compliance company, uh, person, personal status, one person on FMLA and one on workers' comp. Uh, the center station, we need to be out of there by the 20th. Um, and then the last one, consider truck repairs. EC3 needs a new transmission for 4,000. EC8 is out for AC, and EC4 is out for transmission. That's all. We move a uh, motion. We entertain a motion to approve the minutes for the MS. So moved. All right, motion is made by Magistrate K. Was there a second? Second. Second, Magistrate Short. Discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes, uh, signify saying aye. 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 Those like sign. Motion carries. All right. Uh, next report. Are there any further reports? I know we got more committees than two, but uh, that it. That's it. The finance committee missed our meeting, so we'll report next month. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're in the red. Judge, I tried to get a hold of him to tell him we had a meeting and he wasn't answering. He wouldn't answer your phone, right? <laughs> no pay cut. And, and Judge, right. uh, <laughs> Mary may not uh, be aware, but in collaboration with the Judge, Chris, uh, uh, Magistrate Cullen, myself, uh, we are no longer meeting, so I don't have a meeting report for the Parks uh, Committee. I Parks want... Committee should still be meeting, though. We didn't meet, but we should still be meeting. It's actually well, in the agreement. Chris? I talked to John. The judge, about this the the judge mentioned the, that he and the mayor sitting on on the board 
um, obviate the, the need for it. So that, that was the last word from both the judge and Chris. Let's look at the agreement again because it's actually in the agreement that we are still to be meeting. Who has uh, been appointed by the judge to serve on that? Because he picks the Tom, Tom and I. Mm -hmm. So I, mean, I guess you guys can meet amongst yourselves. I mean, with John Bell. John Bell still wants to meet yeah, with us. Yeah, and, and, and I agree. John, John was very receptive to us continuing, but I just want for the formal records when, when the auditors come and say, where's the report? Yeah, which, which if you all get to a point where you're not going to meet anymore, you need to amend, the judge needs to amend the administrative code. That yes, we need your advice on that. Okay, well, let me look at the administrative code. Thank you. Look at the code and look at the agreement that we signed. That we, we have no power with it, so I'm each. And two, and then one. Right. So we'll go around the room uh, on new business. Uh, District one. Uh, no, no old business listed, but uh, no new business. Uh, I didn't follow you. What did you there was no, there was no line item for old business. Um, no. Is it? So we're not going to discuss that. No. Fine. Thank you. Yeah. No new business. All right. Thank you. None. Mr. Simmons. I have nothing. The only thing to discuss was uh, uh, the reason. I'm, I'd like to kind of explain my vote, if it'd be possible. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, I, I'd like to see the the uh, supervisors do a better job than what I think they've done explaining and selling the time clock. And I hope that they get back with their people and explain to them and, and get them sold because the calls that I'm getting, they don't understand it. So I, I just hope the supervisors will get back with their people and tell them why and explain it like Murray is explaining here and John and all of you into the rest of us. That needs to happen. It has not happened uh, effectively. It's I will do a better happen. job with my staff meetings and the directors to, to better well, inform. I don't, think, I don't think it lays with you. I think it well, lays with them going back to their people. I know, but I need to help reiterate that is a step that has not been completed yet and it needs to happen. Thank you. That's all I have, sir. All righty. Thank you. Uh, just a happy belated birthday to him. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Birthday she wouldn't let me sing to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that's the gate. Um, I would just say if you haven't had a chance yet to participate in any of the online training that CACO has been offering, and the Magistrates Association has a training tomorrow morning, actually, and they have four sessions on the impact of coronavirus on counties. Um, it's, it's been very effective and they've done a nice job and the, the CACO um, offerings have gotten better each time as they've kind of improved their, their technolo technological skills and their ability to share the information and, and it is pretty um, hopefully cost effective and I'm, I'm hoping it's something that they'll be able to uh, continue moving forward where we don't have to drive to the different facilities and just do it from here. I have talked to Bill, and if anybody doesn't have the video access that you need to attend these meetings, um, Bill has offered to, I think he said he had three, at least three units available that he can set up. But if you have a smartphone with a camera on it, you can also um, be online from your, from your smartphone as well. I'd like to echo what uh, uh, Jamie is saying, and Judge, thank you for the privilege of using the room between your office and here it worked very well I think I think they prefer uh, you were talking about two or three I don't know whether Keiko would allow two or three on one computer or not and then you've got the space of they six allow, feet they allow three or four I've already but from that if we want to do that space. Long, if we've got set up and got space yeah. Right. yeah I think in this room as long as you can be like in this room if Bill can set it up where you, everybody's on camera in this room and you're, you're spread out that would be great and it would I'd and they've got, and, and the way for the, uh, I understood talking with our director of CACO, we don't have to worry about signing in and off. They, we give her a name and so on on the camera, and they 
log us in to take care of our errors and so on for us. Right, exactly. So we don't have to do it ahead of time? With, uh, no, no, I think Ann has to get us registered. Ann has to register you. Yeah, okay. But then once you're yeah. registered, they, they do the, the back end paperwork for you. You don't have to fill well, out. Well, we can register. Well, I understand we can register when we got, when Bill hooks us up. We're sitting here, three or four of us, and we give our name and so on. They register us in. Well, we got an email just a day or two ago that they were almost closing one out because they were at max. Um, and I, I can't imagine that when I can't computers are computers. Online. I think uh, part of the issue is that there's different packages you can get from Zoom or whatever, and depending on the package they have, you can only have so many, uh, so many other people participants, yeah. participants on with you. So do we need to post a schedule of online training that we can yes. house right here? Is that yes. what we're looking at? That'd be good. Yeah. Uh, the only I'll thing I remember is I get them. I'll try to remember to share them with everybody as well. And and the the the, the key yeah, with all this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not Not at home, I can stream it. Biscuits but, and gravy and they, lunch. You know, if I have to speak, I can't. They can't get me. You know. <laughs> so if we can do it, if we can come in here and do it together, you know, yeah. four or five of us, that'd be great. It would be. <laughs> It'd be great. All right, sounds good. So, right, how many hours sure that class? Uh, how many hours I give from our job? You know, they they're usually doing them in like hour segments. And yeah. So you're getting you know one one hour for each hour. But they usually set it up for four hours. Yeah, they usually yeah. like yeah. four but hours. You don't have to stay for all of them. You can do hours. one to all four hours. You can do yeah. one hour and do all four hours. All right. Uh, is, is it too in? late to sign in? On are y'all gonna do this tomorrow here? I'm going to do mine from home tomorrow. I'm okay, what so about you two? I'm not going to do it tomorrow. Oh, I don't know that we can get it put together that quick for tomorrow. Okay, all right then. Well, there will be more. Ronnie yeah, here. I know there will be more. Ronnie, everyone he gets this set up. Though. Tom, you're interested in that, aren't you? Very oh, I am. So. I am, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. John, I think it's your turn. Well, I don't know whether you would classify this as new or old, but I want to go back to the minutes of the last meeting of which it was written, the Magistrate K would ask that the document be reviewed. The document I refer to is the agreement to use Constitution Square. A copy will be sent to each magistrate, and this will be placed on the 28th Fiscal Court meeting agenda. Uh, I think we're at the meeting, and I haven't seen it on the agenda. I got a feeling that it maybe got forgotten, and I can understand. However, it hasn't totally been forgotten by some other people. Um, Chris, I think I gave you a copy of that. Did you have a chance to review that? I mean, I, I've reviewed it. I mean, there's some, and I've, I've, you know, I've dealt with the Trinity Episcopal Church. Is that what is the name? Is this the rental agreement? This is the rental agreement. See, the agreement has in it that you got to have insurance. Nonprofits really don't have insurance. And good nonprofits that we all know, um, would like to use some space over there, which as citizens they own. That's um, true. But we don't have a, the agreement that was handed out really doesn't work for that purpose. It, it's, it's more designed for a larger, it's different than farmer's market using it, they just use some of the land, that's what we're talking about. It really but is farmer's using market has insurance, I believe. They probably do because they are an organization yeah, and they pay they pay dues and, oh, yeah. and that goes. I follow to what you're saying. My only concern is that if something were to happen, I thought you did after that meeting. Did Jennifer respond on some of that? I'm sorry. I didn't. didn't Jennifer send out a text on? Jennifer had a way of handling, it, and I don't know how she handled. Okay, it. she sent an email out. To on, she sent an email out. Yes, yeah, she did. So but right after the meeting, uh, I have a feeling that it's been. If you're just going to use some of the land for something that you want to do, I don't see damage. I mean, I, yeah, I, I understand hope, where you're coming from, I would hope but not. I would I, I I don't see damage as an issue. Uh, but that's up to the committee, and I'm well, trying to stay within. It's in their hands. It's in their hands. I'm trying to stay within the committee. Top of their list. And I'm trying to stay within where the committee needs to be, but I think we need to recognize that. Nonprofits and small groups who wish to use it for a short period of time uh, is different than a band or some big type of organ, organization. And right now, we, we're treating them the same. And so that really could be anything from a board meeting of the Rotary to DAR? Well, it, it's just 
the request I'm getting is just has to do with is what want to borrow a little of the land to have. But but they might even want the building over there to have it. Well, it has a building has not been asked from to be. I, I don't see a building being involved in it. It's just the fact it's a little bit like a farmer's market. They use a little bit of square footage of land. I plan to try and attend that BOK committee meeting. Oh, you go, you, okay. Yeah, I'm going to try to attend that to see what. Will you, you represent the nonprofits, sir? Yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> the small nonprofits who have no money who may be trying to raise money. And depending on their discussion and recommendation, yeah. I would ask that uh, whoever their, their new appointed leader might be to come make a presentation on, on, on that. Okay. The other, the other thing that I want to jump in on. And this involves a lot of you, Chris, if you don't mind. And I'm, I'm going back to a handout that probably all of you all got. It has to do with the jail and the detention center. And the agreement that was 20 years old, probably. And it's written here that the inter, interlocal corporation, cooperation agreement violates KRS 71.020. So then I started thinking, if, it, if we were in violation, then everything that goes back 20 years is in violation. If that's the agreement that was the working agreement back then and it was wrong then, then we've been working under something that violates law. Now that's just common sense to me. Is that an accurate trade? Well, I guess it depends if the KRS has got amended over time or, or not. You know? Well. Then I thought about if we've been operating under an agreement, under something against KRS, then everything else that we did under that was all these twenty nine. Was it not? I mean, I, that's, all, that's all, a month away. You mean the whole thing? But yet, it seemed to me like going back twenty years that. We were a leader in this. We were the first to do it, if I remember correctly. It had to go through Frankfurt. It had to be approved in Frankfurt. But yet, all at once, I'm reading here where it was illegal according to KRS 71.020. So that means that all of this that was written back then should never have happened. And I wonder, then, then how did bonds get issued if the if the agreement was illegal, how did bonds get issued? I think I may know. I think Ball County did the bonding, and it was all based on our credit, on our, on our credit. It's all based on just Ball County alone. On just Ball County alone, and maybe that's how. But yet, if the agreement was not legal, how, how did we get to this point? I realize that's 20 years ago. Well, I I, need, I can clarify that. Can, uh, I, I can I, I because that. I was there and I was. Um, I worked many, many, many hours on, on this whole process. And when, I, when uh, obviously, you have to go before the state, um, state um, debt officer, and the state de debt officer looked at our finances for us to levy bonds. But they also, because of the agreement that was drawn up by bond council, who are a group of attorneys that work with local government and state local um, department for local government, the, the debt officer um, for state local government, we all worked together and created that interlocal agreement that put credence into additional revenues because we were able to show a budget that Mercer County's money would be coming in and paying off the debt service along with Boyle County based on the language of an interlocal agreement between Boyle County and Mercer County. And they knew full well that it was not a, 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 not a regional jail, but it was developed as a new platform hoping other counties would join in as a joint, they called it a joint jail, or, or a cooperative partnership between two counties with Lake Circuit and District Court. Well, the reason I bring that up today is I, I think we've had, we, we've had within very recent times, last couple of meetings, where the joint jail committee seems to not be together as much 
as I think the jailer, the jailer says he's not going to be involved in that anymore. Well, what does that do to the joint jail? This discussion of where we are needs to really be put on speed, in my opinion. And we need to really see where we're going to go, who's going to be involved, and how we're going to get to the next step. That's that meeting that and the judge is so putting together. So can the treasurer chime in, too, about where we are financially? Should we talk about the finances? Oh, certainly. So when we left that meeting, and, and judge, you can chime in here at any time because I did full disclosure. Um, since the jailer and, and the fiscal court chose not to participate in the joint jail any longer, um, there was a request for annualized expenditures that was in that, okay, so when, when, the, when the treasurer asks for money from Mercer County, it is money that's in the future, okay? I don't ask for past bills. What I'm asking for are for them to participate to pay for bills for the future. And when the joint jail became defunct, because you can't have five people who are supposed to participate and only four people are going to be there, two Mercer, two Boyle. It's not truly a joint jail committee any longer. Um, so I felt like, in, as, as my papa taught me in all fairness, that I couldn't accept the money from Mercer County because a lot of our bills that we're paying in July and a lot of the revenue that they, or two, Two revenue pieces that they receive, Mercer County receives in July from the state, is turned over to us, which, it, you know, it's about $70,000. I couldn't accept that money. I can't accept that money from another community when there's no regulations in place to collect that money from somebody. So when you all voted to allow the jailer not to participate with the joint jail anymore, then to me there's no joint jail, which means I can't accept money. We haven't set, the fiscal court has not set a ratio, we've not set um, an allocation or a per diem, um, so I can't accept that money. So that's why you transferred $50,000 of Boyle County general fund money into the joint jail again this court date because we got our allotment, which helped offset the money Mercer County was supposed to give us. And, and we calculated the per diem, and, and the jailer even made the second to the motion that the per diem was going to be $42 a day. And, and I even asked the judge, do we, do we bill then for June's inmates, but their bill is only going to be 18, I think it was almost $19,000, as opposed to... Seven. The, the amount of money that we were going to ask for them previously. So the treasurer has no direction. You have a joint jail budget that is now going to start consuming all of your, um, you know, your your regular Mercer funds County. from the general fund that Mercer County is not contributing. So we have a we have a problem not only with the joint jail. Um, you have a problem with revenue flow and general fund monies, and you also have a problem with. I guess the direction that we're going with with Mercer County because um, there's not been a meeting and nothing's been solidified. So work. I feel like I'm kind of at this point in time at a standstill. And um, so please understand that you know um, I, it's not that I make the rules. It's just that morally I couldn't accept that money from them. I think I think in this kind of discussion we need the jailer involved. Well, but he's not here. He, he, and I'm sorry he's not here, but... This is a time, loyal kind of financial issue. And, but it, when, I, when I read that our agreement back 20 years ago was not legal, then everything that came after and went into the writing of everything afterwards was not right either then. In other words, you're saying that and, and all, so, this, all these years we've been meeting illegally. Well, if, we, if this is correct. Right. And is this, and this is, this, is what I'm reading, is this and it KR's never kicked in until so I so. really started thinking about it, and I thought then the whole way it was set up to operate was wrong. Let me relate it to you. And, 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 and I, I'm saying, 
I know, but if, as if this it was, case, and this is right, then we need to really dig into it now. Has anybody looked, Chris, have you looked at this number that the jailer gave us, this KRS, so and so? I mean, I've reviewed it some, and I mean, I think is that, he Is he correct on it or not? I mean, I tend to agree on some issues of it. Uh, but you now, if you look at contracts, for example, just I'm just giving you an example. Right. You know, a contract you, you see very often where. You know, if one clause is ruled invalid, it doesn't poison the whole contract. So to say that we've been operating illegally isn't necessarily the case because okay, well, maybe that's, one that's thing is wrong, it up. but it doesn't necessarily mean it invalidated the whole agreement. That's even in the, the planning and zoning document that we just uh, ratified. So I'm just giving you an example there. But uh, I mean, I do just like reading some of the information uh, provided to me by. Uh, Taylor Wolford, you know, there's there's some duties that he's provided or he's constitutionally by protected. statute that it's kind of like prohibiting him from doing certain things if he has to join. It's like the joint jail is kind of telling him what to do when he has the authority by statute to do these things. So it's kind of, in his opinion, you know, it's, it's keeping him from doing his job. And I mean, on some of those. Uh, arguments, I mean, I do agree to, to some extent. I mean, I'd like to sit down further and uh, talk about it, you know, a, a group of us to, to really... Uh, His withdrawing from the committee, what does that do to the committee? Well, <laughs> we have one less member. <laughs> you got one less vote. And I mean, I think that it causes... Concern, you know, we, we have to well, do something and we can't just do it. I, I, I put think it off. We have to. I think it's worthy of us understanding that there's reason to be concerned. And it never hit me at our last meeting when this was. And, but I've thought about it since then. And I think, no. where does that really put us? And do we need not. And do we need to come together and have that discussion uh, to be sure that we can function going forward? I mean, definitely, because if Mary's not being able to uh, morally accept money or whatever, then it's all on us. So we'll definitely have to come up with some kind of plan. Whether Certainly need to move forward with whatever that new plan is as quickly as we can. The only way to do it is to put it on the table and start talking about it. Yeah. So. Well, that's why I asked the committee, and, and uh, you know, which is, which is Jamie and Tom, to meet with the judge and myself over there, and we just haven't got together Give me, give me a time next week or this week that we can meet. This, you know, I'd rather do it next week, but, you know, Mary's in a, in a, in a dilemma and rightfully understood that she has no direction, so we need to start d developing that direction but so we give her direction on what she can can't do. The committee, I, I have to say this, the Joint Jail Committee was not formed to tell the jailer what to do. The Joint Jail Committee was formed because there was general fund finances that a large amount of that that is funneled into the jailer's budget and the fiscal courts, because they were paying debt service and contributing large sums of money into the joint jail or to the jail even as a uh, standalone entity, they had to have some say in what was going to be allocated and allowed to be spent. And that, so the jailer gave the jailer a venue to come to him and say, I want to expand this program, but it's going to cost us $50,000 a year, and I want to do this. And it gave the joint jail the ability, or even the jail committee the ability to say, what's our return on that investment, and how can we justify to spend the taxpayer's money? That's the only reason why they were, it was never, there was never the intent to tell a jailer what he was allowed and not allowed to do. So it just kind of morphed into that where he kind of had his hands tied because this group that was getting together thought they had more power than they actually did. No, they we were still I, just regulating that's finances. Accurate. I don't think it's even set up by jailers. I mean, jailers have no, no say in setting it up, best I remember, did they, Mary? It was all agreed upon just right. to build a new jail that they were going to shut down and the jailer would have been a, a transport officer. Because right. okay. they were going to shut our jail down. 
And he wouldn't have been a jailer, he would have been a transport officer. I think we're at the point where we need to start having these discussions of how we yeah. want to move forward with the detention center. And then, did I hear it correctly when either Roger or Jane said something about maybe having three to four hundred more? Yes, prisoners? you did. Four hundred. Did I, did I, four hundred. And I, it, did it hit I you all? I thought we had it by now, but it hadn't happened yet. Did it hit you all? What the heck are yeah. we going to do? Well, I certainly I think, thought about that. that, 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 that and I thought, did I understand that right? Well, yeah, all these cases that aren't worse. And I have no idea. I, I got that same thing, John. Uh, and what went through my mind is where's he getting his doing? information? How does he know about this? Well, the Why cases that aren't being adjudicated. Like we're guessing. He, I, I think that, that was a statement he should have made, and, really. And I didn't, and, and I, I'll take my share of the blame. I didn't ask where it came from, where he pulled that, but I did think. I think you just. We can probably that, look at that number because, like, in the, you know, going through the COVID situation, uh, Supreme Court made some some rules and so forth. Uh, for example, if, if persons weren't charged uh, with a, a C felony or greater, then basically, yeah, you take them to jail, book them, and let them out on a ROR release on their own recognizance. So. Uh, if they, you know, take that away and actually book people and they have to stay in there, don't, don't just get a bond because of the uh, letter of their, you know, degree of their felony, that, or, you know, or misdemeanors they're charged with, then uh, those numbers would increase because I guess he's just looking at all the ones that, that got charged with uh, D felonies or less that had to let go. So if you counted those up, if we'd are, otherwise, you know, they'd stayed in jail and had to have a monetary bond or whatever, then those numbers would have been at the, the level that potentially what they're they've so, estimated. Some of y'all weren't here so a couple of years ago when we went through that 300 figure. Let me tell you, it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun for anybody. I, I don't want to go through that again to tell you. I mean, the problem you, is you that all don't want to go just through because it just maybe COVID hit doesn't mean the crimes stopped. And so I, know it. I think crimes have actually like, they've gone up. Worse. They've gone up, Chris. I mean, you see, it's it's frustrating. Uh, uh, and I understand why it would. Uh, when I review cases and so forth, and it's they'll not say, over yet. Mm -hmm. give this person a break, I'm like, well, we just let them out in April, <laughs> and they committed this crime, and well, now they've committed this yeah. new, new crime in May, or, you know, it's... There's so, no punishment for them right now because that, they don't have to go to jail, essentially. <laughs> they're So they're just going to, like, hey, what's, what's, what's wrong with creating this? And, like, in the paper crime? you saw, or that one lady... I don't know if you remember, there's an article or maybe it was on Facebook or something. A lady committed, she was released in the same day she committed like three crimes and the next day committed another one, stole a car, you know, and they just had well, to keep on letting her out because that's what the Supreme Court, you know, that was the rule. And so I'm, I, I know I took some time to bring this up and I apologize to you, but I do think it's something that we're facing and it's coming sooner than we think. And I think we need to start having some serious discussions. There's a lot of what you just said. Now, you know, the committee, these two guys and myself are going to get with okay. the Mercer County folks. And, and what did I say? I used the term transition. We were going to develop a path forward to transition. But you're also wanting, I think, I don't know if you're wanting to or not, but you mentioned something questioning our previous vote or discussion about whether or not it's move, prudent to move forward based on what we've heard singularly or without Mercer County. So there's two or three different issues all wrapped into I, one. I, I, I think it's time to start having those discussions and because um, uh, we're, we're there. And, and then the three to four hundred shocked me this morning. I was hoping we'd never get close to that figure again. Uh, oh, it's, it's almost imminent. And in fact, I thought it would have already occurred other than what the Supreme Court has allowed due COVID-19 to be pushed out further than what we initially thought. Are we really prepared for another 300 inmate situation? They were preparing for it. I mean, Brian was thinking that they were going to lift some of those restrictions on uh, bond and stuff. and. Uh, he was preparing, he was ordering a lot more supplies and this and that in anticipation that it would go back to that level. I mean, I'm trying my best not to, uh, to, to fill the jail up and I want, 
you know, to let people do different programs and so forth, but sometimes they have to go to jail. Well, the judicial system is going to make the decision and hand them off to the detention center, and we got to be prepared to take the handoff. What the? Uh, yep. You guys got a date? Yeah, I was going to say any day next week. Could could we meet at ten o'clock after our nine or eleven o'clock after our nine o'clock that we've scheduled with Mary on Tuesday the fourth? Yeah, that sounds good to me. If the judge we'll could come it. over, sounds good to me too. I'm good. So we'll set us to uh, either him come over here or we go over there at 11 o'clock on Tuesday the 4th. Sounds great. Okay, you got it? Thank you. Uh, and listen. then that will that will give us the springboard to bring in these yeah. other discussions uh, of uh, uh, that you bring. Thank you, sir. All right. That's all right. Is there any further business right. that we have to discuss today? I'll just say one, one quick thing. Um, I guess I'm trying to collect some uh, back occupational tax uh, <laughs> money that wasn't uh, collected by the state. Uh, the state has uh, they sent us something saying if once you know we change the occupational tax from 0.5 to 1.25, well, uh, they say you got to and it went into effect January 1st. Maybe it was past December 12th or so. But they're saying you have to give 60 days notice to us so we can have that time to be able to change things around to be able to collect that for you. Uh, obviously that wasn't 60 days. They're saying it's not that people don't owe it, but we're not, don't come to us wanting that money. So I've begun the process. I mean, I've got a list of like everybody that was paid in this county by the state during a, a little time period where there was that lag before it, it uh, came over to taking out that amount. And, uh, started last Friday. The easy part, I was going around to the people that work in the courthouse uh, saying, hey, you owe a little bit of money. But it's really not that much. It's, it ranges, I've seen, anywhere from 10 to $30. So, uh, and that doesn't seem like a lot, but if you add it all up, all the people, I mean, it's it's a good chunk of change. So I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that. Thank Jason, you. I don't know if you've run in into this, but I've tried to pull down the quarterly forms to for Danville and Ball County. Mm -hmm. uh, it still has the old rate on it. Is it? Did you find the same yep. thing? And I don't know why we can't get the new rates put on. Every uh, year, my my CPA has the same problem. Yes, sir. It's what are we talking human. about? Where are you looking? The, the for, this is the computer to pull a form down, a tax form. We we as employers fill it out on a quarterly basis. And the I mean, is that something Bill needs to do here? Or where I mean, do you that's, get it? That's in the tax office upstairs, They, I would think. Or maybe Bill. Maybe Bill's the one that can change it. I don't know. But on the form, it's still got the old rates. Yeah, in fact, this year, well, no. Yeah, I've, I've yeah, same problem. I, I think right. I went to three different sites and it said, had the same problem. So I just changed it with a pen and figured it with the new rate. But you make take the, motion, the average the average return. one out there, they, they wouldn't, he might pay the only other one. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn, made by Major Salmon and seconded by Major Short. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those like sign, we stand in adjournment. Thank you. Okay. Good.